Sports on KS95.7 and live streamed at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome into Atlantic High School. I'm Austin West. Thanks for joining myself and Cody Weaver alongside me for this wrestling duel here tonight. we are got a triangular going on. It's Harlan Cyclones, Atlantic Trojans, and at Denison Schleswig Monarchs. And again, that's always a mouthful to say, again, especially being from Eastern Iowa, uh, that's for sure. Again, Cody joining me alongside, filling in for Tom tonight. Cody, I'm ready for some good wrestling here tonight. Should be a good night. Uh, you look at the squads, you know, Harlan um, is, doesn't look like they've got a full squad. A lot of, you know, little to middle weight guys. Denison, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with Denison. They're, it looks like they're building. They've got about 24 kids now. Um, out for wrestling, uh, kind of a good mix of little guys up to the bigger guys. And we know, you know, Atlantic has shown some open weights in the middle there, and I think they're trying to shuffle some guys around to come up the more complete lineup. So there should be some pretty evenly uh, matched duels as we go through tonight. And the individual matchups, um, you know, you're talking about bonus points uh, is going to be key for a lot of these when you have open weights to make up some of those points. Yeah, and I've talked to Harlan head coach Adam Bendorf a couple times. Again, he's in his first year right now, has been assistant, uh, is now coming in as a head coach. He really likes a couple of guys uh, so far this year. He's had He has three state qualifiers returning this season. Uh, and as a, as, as a dad, you know, he's got to give props to his son, only a freshman uh, here tonight as well. And, and, you know, Coach Bendorf had a son um, that wrestled and has graduated and um, – he was, uh, I'm not so sure he wasn't in the state finals. Um, and Coach Bendorf himself, I believe, was a state champ uh, for Harlan. So it takes somebody that's committed to the program, uh, the little kids as well as the high school kids, and uh, you got to build it from the ground up. Yeah, absolutely. And when you can have a guy that's already been an assistant coach and then he comes in as the head coach automatically, saves a lot of time building relationships with players, that's for sure. Yeah, and you know, you, you know the kids around you, you know the kids in your kids' class and a couple years ahead and a couple years behind, and that makes a big difference. And so we'll keep it right here for a little longer, I believe, as actually we'll take a quick commercial break here before we get into some uh, announcements here tonight. And so we'll be right back here on 95.7 with your Atlantic Trojans. Olson's Outdoor Power is your one-stop service and equipment shop for all things outdoor. We sell the best power sports products in the business from Polaris, Can-Am, Sea-Doo, and Ski-Doo, trailers to tackle any job from H&H, Triton, and Wilson, and we continue to lead the way in lawn and garden equipment with great products from x Dixie Chopper, Husqvarna, Cub Cadet, Steel, and Echo. Add factory train technicians in two locations, and it's easy to see why Olson's Outdoor Power is the leader in all things outdoor. Olson's Outdoor Power, your one-stop service and equipment shop with locations in Atlantic and Carroll. Trojan Sports on KS 95.7 and live streamed at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome back into Atlantic High School. I'm Austin West, joined by Cody Weaver, and we are getting our wrestling announcements coming in, announcing all of our wrestlers here tonight. Yeah, they're going through 106 here. We got Tay Jordan of Atlantic Senior. Um, Denison Sluswig's open, and Nathan Sandquist, just a freshman there at 106. 113, uh, Braxton Haas, a sophomore from Atlantic, comes in. Um, it looks like he'll take on Trey Hartwig of Denison Sluswig and Jesse Jens, a returning state qualifier from Harlan there, a junior at 113. 120, Atlantic is showing open. Uh, Jaden Bradley of Denison Sluswig and Spencer Fink, another name that's been around the Harlan area for a while, um, also a junior. Uh, up at 126, uh, you have your returning state place runner-up here, Aiden Smith for Atlantic, a junior, and he's going to take on Jackson Grave of Denison Sluswig, a sophomore, and Tyler Froelich, a senior of Harlan. 132, Atlantic uh, sends out Jaden Harder, Aiden Esquera of Denison Sluswig, and Aiden Ransom of Harlan. At 138, we see a little bit of change in the lineup here. Uh, Carter Hadley, just a freshman, is going to step in at that 138-pound weight. Uh, he's going to take on Luis Lopez, a sophomore, and Harlan shows open there at 138. 
144 will be another freshman, Draven Smith of Atlantic. He'll take on Chase Williams, a sophomore of Denison. And Brody McKinley, a junior. Uh, at 150, Atlantic is open. It'll be James Lemon of Denison and James Evans of Harlan. 157, Atlantic is open. It'll be Francisco Enscalada, a junior from Denison, and Brayton Cooper, a senior for Harlan. 165, Atlantic is open. It'll be Javier Medina, a sophomore of Denison, and Jaden Stevens, a sophomore of Harlan. Jumped up to 175-pound weight class. It'll be Donovan Hedrington, a sophomore of Atlantic, taking on Isaac Argetsinger of Denison and Tyler Jacobson of Harlan. At 190, it'll be Cohen Bruce, senior, taking on Joel Murillo of Denison and Reese Koch of Harlan. And at 215, it's going to be Zayden Parker, a sophomore, taking on Luis Chan of Denison and Nick Goobles of Harlan. And then jumping up to 285, it's going to be Evan Sorensen of Atlantic taking on Garrett Plague of Denison. And the Harlan shows open there at 285. So we'll take a quick moment of silence here. We'll have our national anthem right here live on KS95.7. That was our national anthem here, and we are getting ready to go. And it's an interesting setup here tonight, I will say. Again, this is the first time I've been to Atlantic High School for some wrestling here this season. And I'm surprised we see, I see four mats out here. Usually when you got a triangular, it's just the one right in the middle, but we got everything out tonight. Yeah, we're going to be <clears> – <throat> the camera uh, on the live stream there at westerniowatoday.com is on the varsity match. Uh, to the left, that is going to be the JV matches for tonight. And the back two mats is in preparation for the Rollin Dyer tournament, which will be here Saturday. So, a lot of towns, uh, towns, a lot of teams coming to town uh, from as far as Grand Island, Nebraska. Um, so Humboldt, you know, Iowa. There'll be a lot of area teams, uh, some teams from other states that'll be here Saturday for the Rollin Dyer. So, looks like Coach Duff was nice and prepared a little bit early, so the wrestlers can uh, work out tomorrow night and take it a little bit easier. And that's always nice to get the mats out as soon as possible. I know uh, this is a little nicer here in Atlantic. Back at North Lynn High School, you had to set up five mats across two gyms and a wrestling room. So a little bit more work uh, that we had to do back in my day. But now you got four right here, and we're getting ready to get some uh, good wrestling underway. Looks like our first matchup is going to be Harlan versus Denison uh, here tonight as well. So no Atlantic, obviously, in the first dual match of the night. And so we'll start off with the Cyclones and the Monarchs. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be a JV match here on the left side, um, so, or some JV matches. It looks like they're going to start at 215-pound weight class in this first duel. Um, so that puts us at uh, starting at 285 there. And uh, Atlantic probably will take on Denison because of the travel distance there in that second duel. Um, it looks like we're going to have maybe some dancers here tonight as well for some kind of in between the meets. Uh, so a lot of activities going on here. And we've got a coach's interview with Coach Duff here. We'll play uh, during that dance time. Um, it looks like on the varsity mat, uh, the captains are out for Harlan. They're waiting for the Denison captain. He's running over here kind of from the left to right there on your screen, going to shake hands and try to determine basically which wrestler or which team um, is going to be home or away. And then you know, when you get into a duel like this, if you're going to bump kids around, uh, you have to either show first or have the other team show first. So if you're trying to avoid somebody or you want a, a match up with somebody, uh, you kind of want to pick, hey, 106, I want to show my guy first and then we'll have them make it up. And uh, so that's kind of what they're doing now, determine who the home team's going to be and then who's going to have their choice of who they send out or don't send out at each weight class. Right, and with, when you have some open weights here in the middle for Harlan, meanwhile, Denison, they just have the one at 106. They got to really kind of be careful where they put these guys, especially with Harlan. They got the three returning for the state qualifiers. Do you want to try to avoid those? Do you want to force yourself to wrestle those matches, or do you think you have better matchups at the other weights to get those bonus points? Yeah, you might bump kids around, uh, especially in the middle there, and you're going to get six points for a forfeit versus... Uh, three for a decision or four for a major decision or five for tech fall. So 
again, it's, uh, you know, each coach has their own strategy of what they want to do to try to where they feel their best options are based upon the head-to-head -head matchups or similar matchups around the Hawkeye 10, what they've seen so far. Right, and that's a big thing. I know uh, when I was in school, sometimes you had those just like, all right, do we think our guy can get less than six points? Can he just avoid getting pinned? Like, it's a state qualifier. He got second place last year, uh, and we don't have a guy that's qualified for state yet, but do we think he can hold off, a, get a tech fall instead of a pin or a major decision instead of a pin and just survive out there maybe and do his best? And that can be a huge thing come the rest of the duel on points-wise. Looks like uh, Dennison's checked in here at 215, and we'll get a uh, we'll get a name here in just a little bit on uh, track wrestling. It's going to be a forfeit there at 215. It'll be Lewis Chan, the senior of Dennison. So Luis Chan gets the first forfeit of the night for Dennison. It looks like uh, 285 is going to be open, so they're going to. Dennison looks like he's going to send out a 285 pounder here, and it looks like Harlan's sending somebody up too. So we'll actually have a match here at 285 pounds, be kind of our first varsity match here. Uh, Harlan versus Dennison. So we got a team score right now. Uh, Dennison's up 6-0 uh, over Harlan with that forefoot there at 215 pounds. You have to think it's going to be Nick Goobles, uh, the sophomore out of Harlan. Yeah, it's uh, Garrett Plaggy, and he's going to be taking on Austin Spray of Harlan. Both wrestlers kind of tied up there, and you see the Dennison kid real aggressive, you know, kind of getting him on the edge of the mat there. Collar tie with his right hand there. Outside elbow on that left side, trying to work on that inside tie there. Wrestler separated a little bit here in the center now. And again, Dennison uh, aggressive there going forward. Harlan, you know, the spray kid there backing up a little bit and circling towards the edge of the mat there. And Dennison with underhook there on that right hand side, pushing in is going to push spray right out of bounds there. They're going to come back to the center. No stall call or anything, but the official won't put up with that long. We've got a minute 22 to go here left in that first period. And again, you see Dennison driving forward there. Plaguey, collar tie on that right side. Spray, uh, spray doing a good job trying to break that collar tie, though, and get the inside tie and control that. Now he's got an underhook there on the right side of Plaguey, working on wrist control on the opposite side. Elbow pass attempt there by Plaguey. Back to the center of the mat here. Again, Plaguey circle a little bit. Collar tie there on the right. Going to push him back out of bounds. And there's your stall call against Spray of Harlan there. And uh, the Harlan wrestler just needs to make sure that he's circling there and moving forward, or at least circling left to right or right to left to avoid getting pushed out of bounds there. I mean, it's right off the whistle. Spray is just immediately out, gets out of that inner circle, and he's already halfway to that outer ring. Yeah, I think you see Coach Bendorf there saying, hey, it's, you know, I don't mind him pushing my guy around, but he's got to do something besides push and push him out of bounds. So, because he's not, there's really no offense there, other, no shot attempts, no drop down to a leg or anything like that. No, we've just seen collar ties really through this entire match, just kind of back and forth. We did get the one underhook in. Um, from Plaguey, so, but other than that, it's really been but collar tie, collar tie, push, switch back and forth. Yeah, for, there's 35 seconds left here in the first period, and started here to try to get through this third period. Collar tie there, nice elbow pass. Looks like Spray's going to work on a headlock here and just gets picked up and taken the opposite direction and return to the mat nicely by Plague there. Plague now has a cross-face cradle line uh, locked up. Let that go. Goes to a deep waist on the left-hand side and has the right wrist tied up of Spray riding pretty tough over the hands. Spray doing a nice job trying to turn to face. Now he's going near side cradle. And Spray circling. Spray, Plague can't quite get that hand lock locked up as time expires there. So it's going to be 2 nothing right now. Uh, Plaguey of Dennison with that lead over Spray of Hartline as we go to the second period. It is Plaguey's choice here in the second period. He's going to defer, and Spray wants to go down that bottom position here to start the second period. 
And it was a good end of the first period. I mean, if Plaguey is able to just kind of control that much on top, I'm surprised he didn't try to go for a shot earlier in that first period. Yeah, once he got on top, he kind of you know, worked cross face cradle there and then got near side uh, cradle there. He's working on the left wrist there. Now comes off the side a little bit here. He is, uh, you know, higher on the on the body there, but is doing a good job staying behind the shoulders and keeping his hands in behind the shoulders and keeping spray from kind of backing out the backside there. Plaguey riding that right hip pretty tight there, working to, trying to get the right wrist chopped or move forward. Now reaches in between the leg here. He's going to try to pick up and elevate here. Goes back to that near side cradle, has the head in the side. Can't quite reach there and get him to ball up enough to get his hands locked up. It is close there. You can see on the camera and he just can't quite get it locked up and, and spray doing a great job, you know, with both legs extended out, kind of in a tripod. Now controls that wrist, pick, takes that wrist and peels it over his head and it comes up a little bit and back over, uh, plague takes over back over the top there again and a little over a minute here and you know, Plague doing a good job riding here, but not necessarily getting off to the side other than that near side cradle that he was working on. And Plague again riding a little bit higher. You see him up around the shoulder blade area, and he's not a lot of offense uh, getting away from the hips here. And you probably could go stall call that way either way. Spray kind of comes up to a knee here now. Plague tries to go cross face cradle. Spray does a good job. Now Plague almost tries to put that right leg in. Does it, gets the right leg in and Spray's gonna crawl out of bounds here and we're gonna come back to the center with 10 seconds to go here in the second period. And it is Plaguey of Denison with that 2-0 two, two lead here over Spray of Harlan. In Spray, I thought he had that tripod at one moment. He forced Plague to drop down to the single leg. I thought maybe he'd try to plant that foot and come up. He's down, to, down by his ankle. He thought he had a chance, but he just kind of stayed down low for some yeah, reason. Yeah, he did stay down low. He did a good job, though, grabbing that wrist, pulling it over the top of the head to avoid that cradle. And so, you know, Plaguey rode him here the whole two minutes with no uh, points scored, and it'll be Spray's choice here in the third period. And looks like he's going to take the top here. Covers that left-hand side, ankle pick right away, breaks Plague down. Now he's going to work on a power half here. Guys, the forearm and the back of the head. Plague does a good job coming back up to his base here. Kind of an inside thigh pry there by Spry. Um, but Plaguey's coming up to his feet here. Now Spry coming out front here across face. Um, getting a little bit too far out front there, but Plague coming up to his base. Arm chop there by Spry. Kind of an arm chop forward. Spry coming up behind here. Has Looks like he's got hands locked. Got inside, and Plague did a good job coming up to his feet there, and Spry was able to bring him right back here. So ankle pick, Plague comes right right up as he's reaching for that ankle and freed that up for a one-point escape here. So 3-0 three, three right now, Plaguey of Denison with that lead. And again, it wasn't bad riding either by Austin Spray most of that third, start of that third period, those first that first minute, as he really just kind of had control, but... Now I think we're just going to get back into the shoving match for the final 50 seconds. <laughs> I think so. Uh, you know, if you look at both the wrestlers, Plaguey is definitely a bigger, a taller, bigger wrestler. And um, Spray, or Spry knows that he does not want to get underneath of him again because he got rode that whole second period. You know, did avoid any points being scored or anything like that. But now Plaguey's in on a kind of an underhook there on the left-hand side, overhook on the right-hand side, and Spry knows better than to push into him because... He's going to get launched. And they go out of bounds here with 23 to go. You almost want to see Spray launch him. He's pushing him out of bounds <laughs> like that. You mean, might as well give him the warning there right on the edge. You're going to go out of bounds. You're not going to risk anything. You're not going to miss any points either way. And it shows an attempt there. And, and Spry with a real nice elbow pass there, but not able to either capitalize there and get to a leg, overhook there, or underhook by Spry. Collar tie on the one side pushes him away here. We're down to five seconds. And... It'll be a 3-0 advantage for Plague here at 285 pounds for Denison. So that'll take the team score to 9-0 right now. Denison Sluswig will be up over Harlan Community. But the big thing is Harlan was open at this weight according to our roster that we had. And so that's a lot better than taking the six for the forfeit. 
And so that's huge uh, here for them as we move down to 106. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you wonder, we talked about people moving people around and maybe they bumped him up to 285 because they felt that his chances were better there. Um, kind of a sophomore uh, versus sophomore at two, uh, 215 there, but Plaguey is, you know, a senior, so you're either way at 215 or 285 for Dennis and they're both seniors. As Nathan Sandquist for Harlan, he's going to get a forfeit at 106 again. Your wrestling announcement is brought to you by Elvis Haas State Farm, always in your corner. And it looks like we're going to get a match at 113 for Dennison. It looks like it's going to be Trey Hartwig. He's going to be facing off against Harlan's Jesse Jens. And again, Jens returning from the state tournament last year. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, Jesse did a good job up there at state last year, continued to wrestle and battle all the way through, and I believe he came out with the seventh or eighth place, uh, you know, finish up there. And I think he went as the number two kid out of district. So, you know, it's one of those things where you just have to continue to fight and work and not give up. And when you get to the state tournament, you know, there's opportunity to give up or give up on yourself. And he just kept battling, and he's got a inside tie there over Hartwig trying to circle on that reg do a maybe an ankle sweep with that right leg now and separates here a little bit and drops into a double is able to come back around behind here on Hartwig two on one wrist there on the left hand side looks like he's going to chop and tilt goes the opposite direction there tries to tilt Hartwig up. Hartwig doing a good job of uh, kind of bait, baiting himself there and rolls through, but he is going to get too near fall there. So it's going to be 4 nothing right now with a minute left here. And he's got the leg in, and he's going to work on uh, the top of Hartwig here. Goes cross body ride, uh, kind of grabs the neck there, and you see him inching forward with his toe there, keeping that right hand in, getting all the points he can get. He'll release that leg there for three near fall, 7-0 here with 30 to go in the first period. Jens, you know, looked good on his feet there and looked really tough on top here with a tilt to start with. Kind of sucks Hartwig back there, but not able to keep him completely on his back for enough exposure there. But he keeps the right wrist and is going to pull him back over across, sits back in, and Hartwig did a good job bellying out there um, knowing that Jens was coming back in. Right now, he's got a chicken wing on that left side. He's going to tilt him over again. Hartwig doing a good job, and no back points awarded there as he was basically out of bounds there, but Jens had control. It'll be Hartwig's choice here. He's going to defer, and Jens wants to go down that bottom position to start the second period. And Jens looking like one of the wrestlers, I when I was wrestling, one of the worst ones you got to see. You just always throw boots in. He's yanking <laughs> legs up. He's wrapping around your body, especially as a short kid. When you get those tall, long, lanky guys, those those guys are tough to combat against. Yeah, they uh, real nice switch there uh, by Jens. Uh, used his leg there to elevate that pressure on Hartwig. Has Hartwig broken down flat here. Now gets that chicken wing in again on that left-hand side. Reaches through, grabs inside the wrist. On the other side, he's going to try to take a big step towards the head here, get him rolled over and exposed. And Hartwick doing a good job, but Jen settles back in there, chest on chest, grabs that post that arm rather than chicken wing. He's going to get three more near fall here, and he's trying to settle in and elevate that head. Still got plenty of time here with a minute 20 to go. Settles in, and Jen gets a fall here at 113 pounds for Harlan Community. So that'll make the uh, duel here 9-6, so tightens up the score a little bit. Dennison Sleswig with the the uh, upper hand here on a 9-6 score. It'll actually move up to 12-6 in favor of Harlan as the six from the forfeit. Oh, uh, they correct. just got it 106, and so we'll get our 120 pounders. Looks like it'll be Spencer Fink for Harlan and Jaden Bradley for Dennison. Again, our wrestler's announcements brought to you by Elvis Haas State Farm, always in your corner. Jens did all that work and still ended up with a bloody nose. <laughs> <laughs> 
crazy. Some hey, some people are just more susceptible to bloody noses. I know I don't think I ever had a bloody nose in four years of wrestling. You know, I had teammates that got bloody noses every single tournament we went to, every single time, yeah. without fail. You see kids that have to wear masks, you know, to protect their nose because once right. it starts bleeding, it doesn't want to stop. So a little bit of blood clean up here on the mat, and it looks like we're ready to go here, 120 pounds, and it's going to be Jaden Bradley Dennison taking on Spencer Fink of Harlan. Both wrestlers started here, outside single there by Fink, goes the opposite direction, dumps him kind of on his uh, butt, is able to circle around behind here and, and cover that deep waist on the right side. And Bradley, you see, wanting to peel that wrist, doing a good job peeling that wrist, coming up to his feet. Elevation there by Fink, returns him back down to the mat. Fink riding tough there, tying up that left wrist of Bradley. Bradley coming back up to his Fink, or up to his feet. Fink releases him, and it's 2-1 score here with a minute 20 to go in the first period. It's Fink of Harlan with that advantage over Bradley of Dennis and Sluswig. Real nice duck under there by Fink. Fink picks him up, brings him back down, tries to catch a half as he's bringing him down to the mat. Bradley doing a good job bellying out there. Fink releases again. 4-2 match here with just under a minute to go in the first period here at 120 pounds. It's Spencer Fink of Harlan Community taking on Jaden Bradley of Denison. Near side single there, and you see Fink continue to walk his hands up the back here. Walk the shoulder up the midsection of Bradley, and he's going to try to get some near fall points here as he holds him and gets the two points awarded. And as he does that, Jaden Bradley knows that, hey, my back's getting close, does a good job bailing out. But it looks like Fink... Uh, He's got a chicken wing on the right side, release that, and he almost had a Turk there. Let that Turk go for that chicken wing, and Bradley now in a chicken wing on the left-hand side, and Fink doing a good job stepping over, trying to catch that neck. Uh, but you know, Bradley on the bottom there doing a good job fighting that so far, and Fink now adjusts here with three seconds, but no back points are going to be awarded in this first period. So it'll be 6-2 Spencer Fink, a Harlan community with that advantage over Jaden Bradley, Denison. And Bradley's been doing a great job on defense. I mean, 6-2 right now, our score, but still Bradley's been able to fight off a lot of stuff that Fink's been throwing at him. He's had to change up everything he does. Uh, it's always been the second or third move and attack that he's had to use on it. Yeah, and you see there, it was uh, Bradley's choice there. He chose the bottom position, and Fink went ahead and said, I want to go on my feet, so Bradley gets that. A escape point basically before the second period starts with so 6-3 match now and Bradley in on a shot there a single leg shot and Fink doing a good job counteracting that kind of gets caught with his switching into a double here but has his head kind of in between the legs you see him come out hook that leg he'll want to try to step over and, and Bradley doing a good job you can tell he's been in scramble positions before he's keeping himself in a decent position not allowing Fink to finish that shot and they're going to create a stalemate there with a minute 27 to go. So a good job there by Bradley avoiding that points. But right away on the whistle, Fink goes to that low single and they kind of end up in the exact same position that they were in. We'll see if Fink can capitalize here. He's got his head in between the leg and Fink, or excuse me, Bradley again doing a good job kind of going in between the legs, keeping his body close to the backside of Fink there. Be a caution there for Fink. Um, a little bit of a fake, but got worn a little bit early there. I mean, I like the idea. Be aggressive right there, smack the back, get him to sprawl like that, see if you can get a reshot out. Circle around top yeah, as he stands back up. Again, outside double there. That time he caught the head on the outside there, gets that two points awarded. 8 3 match now for Fink of Harlan Community. Ties up the left ankle of Bradley. He's working on trying to get that chicken wing back again. And Bradley, again, peeling wrist, doing a good job hand fight in between there, keeping Fink from locking things up. Goes the opposite direction, posts that outside leg and keeps Fink from circling. And they're right on the edge of the mat here with 35 to go. And they're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center. So again, good defense there by Bradley on the bottom with that wrist fighting. If uh, Fink is able to get a chicken wing in, he's doing a good job posting that outside leg. But Fink, it's been all Fink on his feet, basically. 
Uh, did have a couple near falls there in that first period, but otherwise it's been a pretty tight match here in the second period. Bradley up to his feet here, and Fink continues to push forward, and he has to return him to the mat and doesn't, and it's going to be a stall call against Fink there uh, because he didn't return him within the five seconds there. Fink now trying to peel that outside wrist. Excuse me, Bradley peeling that outside wrist here, and looks like he's working on almost a freestyle or he's going <laughs> to try to roll him here, and 8-3, uh, end here that second period we're going to go to the third period here it's Fink's choice and he's going to go down to try to get that additional escape point it's a five point match now and uh, Fink you know is going to want to try to be have at least an eight point lead here and again he got hit with that switch the same thing that he got hit with earlier in the match doing a good job with that right leg elevating the right leg of Bradley and able to kind of come around behind there and finish that so Ankle pick there by Fink on top. Again, Bradley doing a good job getting his base back up each time up to his knees and Fink riding that right or left ankle quite a bit. Works on a tilt here and, and Bradley trying to reach back and grab that leg of Fink and they're gonna go out of bounds and come back to the center here with a minute 27 to go. I wouldn't be surprised to see Fink, you know, release him and go back on his feet here uh, in a more comfortable position here. So. It's a seven point match now uh, to be six points. So a takedown here would make it a major. A shot attempt there by Bradley. Good sprawl by Fink. Minute 20 here. And the nice part is, you know, that time he got caught a little bit with his ankle bent a little bit. Fink able to kind of get his head out of the middle there off the side. Traps the leg of Bradley underneath there. Rides on cross there and works inside wrist control there. Bradley doing a good job getting a leg out back up to his knees on the edge of the mat. 55 to go here now. Again, wrist control there by Bradley. He's able to peel that over the top of his head, kind of circle around and face. So it's 12-5 now. We're back to a seven-point match. And, you know, I like the Brad. Bradley's just a young kid, but he's uh, a sophomore here. But he's been aggressive. He's not afraid to take a shot, not able to finish a shot yet, but a real nice whizzer here by Bradley, releases that whizzer and Fink's able to kind of slip back through there on the left side of Bradley there for another takedown. So 20 to go here, it's a 14-5 match. Fink of Harlan Community over Bradley of Dennis and Sleswig here at 120 pounds. Bradley's uh, working on peel and wrist here. He's gonna try to turn and face. His coach is saying, get one, get one. He gets one and right away takes another shot. So you got to be happy with his effort there. And um, he, he continued to fight the whole time, did a good job defensively. And, you know, you can tell Fink is not super excited about the way the match went. But, you know, Bradley did not give up, did not break, and uh, bought, you know, battled all the way to the end of that match. Yeah, I'd love to see Bradley go against a guy that's not, again, returning as a state qualifier last year. Put him against a guy who's maybe evenly matched with him because he was just fantastic defensively maybe even if the points didn't show it but he did a great job on defense during that entire match again just a major decision for that holding that guy down so props to Bradley for sure for fighting through that match our 126 matchup brought to you by Elvis Hass State Farm it's gonna be I believe Jackson Grave and then Aiden Ransom of Harlan it's grave of Denison. Yeah, and he's got Ransom on his back already here. Um, kind of in an awkward position here and comes up to his feet here and Grave continues. Try a headlock here and you see a lot of Harlan kids do that a lot and Grave doing a nice job settling his hips back going the opposite direction there to avoid that headlock. He's peeling that left side wrist out now trying to get into a chicken wing. He's got the chicken wing in, just needs to be careful. He keeps it legal there and Ransom doing a good job coming up kind of to his feet there and you see Grave do it going the opposite direction there, breaking him back down to his knees. We got a team score here. He stacks him up here, settles in, does a reverse half here on him. Jackson Gravy Dennison trying to tighten that up. But Ransom doing a good job fighting that. You see him readjust and he's gonna try to catch that arm if he can and 
Ransom doing a good job fighting that, and there's no way it's going to get tight enough where he's at there, but he's going to get three points awarded. So it's going to be 8 nothing now. Grave of Denison with that lead. He uh, tilts him up again there for a one count, but no back points awarded. And uh, Harlan Community's got a 16-9 team lead right now here at 126 pounds uh, through a few weight classes. Again, Grave Ransom kind of comes up to his feet here right on the edge of the mat and is going to crawl out of bounds here. We're going to come back to the center with 19 to go. It's an 8-0 advantage here. Jackson Grave of Denison over Ransom of Harlan Community. Ransom's down set there. Grave covers that left side. Right away, deep waist with that right arm. Does catch a chicken wing there on the left-hand side. He's going to try to maybe go opposite direction, stack him up here. Stacks him up flat on his shoulders, and it's tight. He's able to settle in here. Gets the fall here with four seconds to go in the first period. So that'll uh, tighten that team score up pretty close here. It's going to be 16 to 15. Uh, Harlan Community with that advantage as we go to 132 pounds. A much needed pin there for Dennis. Again, like you said, 16 to 15. Uh, now the team score here tonight is we'll move on to 132 pounds. It'll be Aiden Esquera, Esquera of Denison and Adam Ellert of Harlan. Yeah, there was the grave kid was so excited he forgot to take the bands off, so the official went over and got the bands and brings them back to the kid. And, and they realized they were in the wrong colors here <laughs> on the mat as well. Ascara had the red on. He is green, and Ellert was just ready to take the green one and be like, sure, I'm ready to go. Why not? As long as the points are awarded to the correct team, right. it doesn't matter what color it is, but it's easier if you're red and you're Harlan. It's makes more sense. Both wrestlers here just kind of trying to fill each other out a little bit. Both good stances, low stance there. Uh, single leg attempt there by Ellert. Not able to finish that. Denison kid able to circle, circle around behind there quickly. A nice roll there by Ellert. Tries to catch him and really good Hip control, knowing your position there by Ellert of Denison, or yeah, Denison. But again, you see that roll through again there by Esquera, or Ellert of Harlan. So it's uh, like rough on a four-year-old wrestling match there where you got one guy in their back, they roll through, roll the other guy in their back, but no back points awarded that second time. So 5-2 here, Esquera Denison was able to catch Ellert on his back, um, was able to reverse him here. Headgear adjusted there by Esquera, uh, and escaped there by Esquera. So we're back on our feet here. Esquera, again, nice low position here. Quite the scramble there, you know, in that first minute. And you can see both wrestlers are taking a little bit of an air break there. It's quite a bit. Uh, Denison Kid, you know, L or excuse me, Esquera, kind of in the same position he was in before and is able to circle around. He's trying to hook that leg. He's got the arms controlled of Ellert, able to circle around behind to get two there. And kind of where he got himself before, was able to roll Ellert over. Ellert did roll back through, though. Uh, ended up on top of Esquera there. We're down to nine here. It looks like uh, a power half there. Almost a full Nelson there by Esquera of Denison. But it's going to end 8-2 here at the end of the first period. A lot of action by both wrestlers there in that first period. We're going to go to the second period, and it is Ellert's choice of Harlan. He's going to defer to that third period, and Esquera of Denison wants to go in that uh, upright position here. And Esquera, and Esquera really, he kind of, he needs to get a new headgear at this point, tighten it up. It's really <laughs> it starting to affect down in his yeah. eye, doesn't it? Outside single shot there by Ellert. Ellert now trying to put that left leg in, put, gets that left leg in, but right away goes down to that hip and tries to kind of catches himself in trouble here. And you see a square doing a good job digging that leg out, uh, trying to get hip position here, but Ellert doing a good job readjusting.
Ellert now tries really high here. Uh, be nice to see a, a you know mule kick here by Grave. That leg almost comes out here, and Ellert's going to settle back in behind the hips here. Now gets both legs in. He's going to get uh, a one count there, but you can see Ellert turning and facing, and it's going to be a battle of hip position here, and uh, a square of Denison wins that battle. 50 to go here in the second period. It's a 10-4 advantage right now. A square of Denison over Ellert of Harlan Community. Kind of working the right side, peeling that right side wrist out, goes, goes half Nelson on the opposite side, and Ellert just basically rolls through, comes on top here. Um, Esquera reaches back here now, tries a half, and they're going to catch himself in a position here. And again, there's that headgear in his eyes. He wants to be able to see mom in the stand, so he pulls that down, and so you can see his mom in the stands. They go out of bounds, so a lot of back and forth here uh, both wrestlers on their um, back both wrestlers rotating and in the end here who's gonna you know end up on top i guess is what it looks like it's going to be here is that the scores tightened up 10-8 here towards the end of the second period again that headgear just so loose he was able to pull it down past his eyes and then under his <laughs> chin again that's the part that's supposed to sit on the top of your head so definitely something that needs to be looked at after his match here tonight if uh, he wants to keep that out of his eyes. So Ellert here with a chop of the left wrist. We did see him uh, ride legs here a little bit earlier. A square broken down on the bottom there flat, and there's five seconds left here. You have to be a quick move to get out of the bottom there. We'll end here, so it should be Ellert's choice here in the third period. And I think his coach is trying to figure out where he wants him. And his coach says, hey, take bottom here. You're down 10-8. You need to escape here in a takedown or a reversal to tie this match up to go OT. But uh, we've seen a lot of action in both periods, both directions. Ellett right away there with a Gramby. Rolls out, turns and faces. So a 10-9 match now. Both wrestlers on their feet in that neutral position. Attack there by Ellert on the outside single. They go out of bounds, and that's the second time he's been successful at getting at that outside single. Was able to finish it the first time. Uh, both wrestlers come back to the center here. And this has been a battle. Uh, both these kids have worked hard, and you can tell they're using their conditioning. Esquera pushes in a little bit, now circles back and backs up a little bit. We saw some shots from him in the first period. A shot there, a single leg there. A square holds onto the head is what you don't teach the kids to do here. Gets caught in the half, didn't release that. Is gonna get put on his back here. And this is one of those, are you gonna fight it till the end and roll him back over or are you gonna give up? And it looks like he's gonna, uh, Ellert doing a good job, you know, maintaining control, but you see a square has got that leg locked trying to lock that leg to keep him from coming out the side to tee up there, and it's gonna be a fall for Ellert. So all that work, it was tied a 10-10 match here with 55 to go in the third, and Ellert of Harlan Community gets that fall to help his team with a big six points there and make it 22-15. Yeah, I mean, that, that one would've gone decision, and it, I believe it should've been 11-10, and Ellert should've been leading because he had that escape they right away to start a, that period. He did period. have the Gramby, you're correct, at the beginning of that period to get an escape and then take down, and then he would've had some back points there too, yeah. so. So huge swing from pin to just a decision if maybe he's able to uh, have a square roll out of that on him. It looks like we're gonna get a forfeit, maybe. No, we won't, doesn't look like. So we will get a, no, we won't get a match at 138. So Chase Williams of Denison takes a forfeit. And then we'll get a match at 144. So again, uh, with that forfeit, we're back up to 21-22 team scored. We talked about those bonus points. So that last match is a perfect example. You talk about six versus three. That continues to give Harlan that lead. 
This is uh, Francisco Escalante of Denison Sluswig taking on Brody McKinley of Harlan Community. And that does not look like Brody McKinley to me um, out there, but. No, it's, uh, sorry, James Lena, Lemon of Denison Sluswig and Brayton Cooper of Harlan. A nice takedown there by Lemon of Denison. You've got the inside control there on the left side. Works Tries to work the chicken wing on the right side of Cooper there and goes ahead and releases him, comes back up to his feet here. Both wrestlers kind of working their feet here. You know, Lemon had that takedown in the first period, a shot attempt there by Cooper, and Lemon able to just kind of drive back into him, catching him on off, his, off his hips a little bit there uh, for another takedown here in the first period. 44 to go here. You have team score, Harlan Community 28. Denison 21, but it's going to be a 27-28 now as Lemon of Denison wins that by fall here at 150 pounds. 144 pounds. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening with <laughs> the scoreboard. Is scoreboard, not keeping up with track, it. what's <laughs> going on now? Because now it's got double 150s, so we'll see what happens here. Well, one says 157, one says 165. And I'm not sure. So they say that's 165 there. Harlan wins by four foot. So I don't know if we're going to wrestle 157 on the mat to the left. Maybe we're going to wrestle Maybe. both matches, varsity here. Surprising that they choose to do that because you don't see that often in duel that they're like, all right, we're just moving both matches. Yeah, you're going to run into the... So, I mean, basically, if you wrestle, the kid can't wrestle for another 45 minutes. Right. Um, tonight might be fine with the dancers and everything, but in between the Denison and... Or, excuse me, the Harlan and Atlantic duel, you're probably going to run into some time there where you don't have those effects. So yeah, it looks like we did uh, 157. It was Brody McKinley of Harlan Community winning that by fall. 165, it was Harlan, Jaden Stevens of Harlan getting that four foot here at 175. It is Ismail Alfaro of Denison taking on Tyler Jacobson of Harlan. And we've got two matches going, so we'll see here if they fill one of them in at 190. It's 157 over on our left. Javier Medina of Denison and Brody Bendorf of Harlan. Yeah, it's got a, you're correct. So they didn't skip that. Yeah, interesting Maybe it was Brody, Mc, it. Brody Bendorf instead of Brody McKinley, I think was the confusion. Harlan's got a Brody Bendorf and a Brody McKinley. So yeah, you're correct. Varsity here, 157. It is Javier Medina of Denison uh, with a 2-0 advantage over Bendorf of Harlan Community. And on your screen, you're seeing 175 pounds. And that is Alfaro of Denison Sluswig taking on Jacobson of Harlan Community. Jacobson with that takedown here. 38 to go here in the first period, here at 175 pounds. We've got team score 34, Harlan Community, 27, Denison Sluswick. You see Jacobson put that half in, tighten that up, get off to the side. Was able to get that fall over Alfaro of Denison Sluswick here at 175. So Tyler Jacobson here at 175, winning by fall. We're going to go up to 190. And it looks like uh, uh, Denison Sluswig is sending a kid out, and I don't see anybody yet showing up for 
Harlan community. It looks like they're at 190 pounds. It looks like uh, Marina will get a forfeit for Denison Sleswig there at 190 pounds. We're going to turn the camera here over to the other varsity match. Uh, the scoreboard won't match, but we'll walk you through this here at 157 pounds. It is Javier Medina of Denison Sleswig. Um, and they're tied up 3-3 here, taking on Brody Bendorf of Harlan Community. Medina there with a kind of a roll, turns and faces here. Bendorf maintains that control, uh, locks up a cross-face cradle here, but is in a really a high position here. Let's see if he goes the opposite direction here, and Bendorf trying to roll him over the opposite direction. Both wrestlers kind of tied up in a tough position here. Medina now reaches inside the leg there like a fireman's, picks up that single, tries to turn and face. Bendorf doing everything he can do to kind of sprawl and sit down. Medina goes opposite direction, and Bendorf doing a good job maintaining control here, but the, you see the hips of Medina casting over Bendorf there, uh, but Bendorf maintaining control, and looks like he's going to get some near fall here as Medina rolls over and reverses him. So two near fall for Bendorf, but then two-point reversal there for Medina. So it's still a 5-5 match here. About 54 seconds left in the second period. The duel has been won uh, by Harlan Community with 40 total team points at this point to 33 for Denison Sleswig. So a pin by Denison would tie it, or excuse me, make it 39-40, but uh, this match is very even so far here with 30 to go. It's a 6-5 match, and it's Bendorf of Harlan Community with that advantage. Medina with an outside single shot attempt there. It's down to 15 seconds to go. Both wrestlers kind of on their feet here. Level change there by Bendorf, but uh, no shot attempt. We're going to a shot attempt there by Medina. He gets a single there. Bendorf not able to kind of circle around behind here. We're going to end this second period here. And we'll see whose choice it is here. It looks like it's going to be Bendorf. And Bendorf wants to go down in that bottom position here. Medina will cover top here. Bendorf's got that 6-5 advantage here as we start the third period. Medina covers the left side right away. Bendorf up to his feet here. Medina puts the left leg in. Bendorf broken down flat to his belly there. Medina kind of working behind the body there inside wrist control. Now peels the wrist, peels the wrist out, um, works on that right side. Kind of getting a little bit higher than what he needs to be. Bendorf looks like he's going to come up. Medina is in a terrible high position, but it has a cradle locked up. And Bendorf able to just kind of sit him through here, but I'm not sure if he's got the arm locked up. He does have the arm, does not have the arm. It should be a legal headlock, actually, I think, but he's just got the head and no arm in that headlock, but the official um, is calling it, so maybe it's a legal move. Bendorf now settles in, kind of hips over, and so it's going to be a two-point reversal there, three-point near fall, and it, uh, Bendorf, Brody Bendorf of Harlan Community there ends up getting that fall here with a minute to 58 seconds gone in that third period. Yeah, that headlock was interesting because you saw both his arms out behind <laughs> Bendorf trying to like push his back up over his head to slide out the back door. But it's like you need kind of need that arm for that headlock. And so I was surprised nothing kind of got called. Uh, but it'll be a win for Harlan in this duel. Quick summary here of the duel between these two. Started at 215, Luis Chan got a forfeit. Garrett Plague of Denison over Austin Spray of Harlan. It was a decision, 3-0. At 106, Nathan Sandquist got a forfeit for Harlan. At 113, Jesse Jens over, of Harlan over Trey Hartwig of Denison with a fall. At 120, Spencer Fink over Jaden Bradley. Major decision, 14-6. At 126, Jackson Grave of Denison Schleswig over Aiden Ransom of Harlan Community. That one was a fall. At 132, Adam Ellard of Harlan over Aiden Escara of Denison. That was a fall as well. 138, Chase Williams of Denison got a forfeit. 
at 144. Brody McKinley of Harlan over Francisco Escalante of Denison. That one was a fall. At 150, James Levin of Denison over Brayton Cooper of Harlan with a fall. At 157, Brody Bendorf of Harlan over Javier Medina of Denison with a fall. At 165, Jaden Stevens of Harvin, Harlan excuse me, got a forfeit. At 175, Tyrell Jacobson of Harlan over Ismael Alfaro of Denison with a fall. At 190, Joel Murillo of Denison with a forfeit. And so that also brings up our match of the beat, brought to you by Elvis Hass State Farm. Cody, I'll leave it to you to see which one you're kind of thinking uh, is your match of the beat. I really thought, it, you know, the Fink match and the Bradley. Uh, Bradley, just a sophomore, uh, continued to battle that whole match. Fink, a returning state qualifier, if not a place winner. Um, he had his hands full. Bradley never gave up the whole time, uh, continued to battle, did a good job defensively, you know, avoiding some near fall working on risk control, um, able to get out. So that to me, that was the match of that duel there. I was going to say, actually, another one that we both really liked, Adam Ellert versus Aiden Descaro. That one ended with a fall in the third period. If Bendorf's not able to pick up a pin there at the end and it goes towards Denison, that's a one-point duel it ends up being. And that match was basically tied all the way through until the final second. So if he's not able to get that pin, that's a loss on the duel score for Harlan. So that's a big, I thought that one was a big difference. Too. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And so those are our two matches of the meet brought to you by Elvis Hass State Farm. Always in your corner. You can kind of see if you're watching the stream. We've got our Atlantic dancers out here. And while we do that, we'll also turn it over to our coaches show here. Uh, Tom Robinson was able to sit down with the Atlanta coach, Coach Duff. Uh, Talked to him earlier this week. Again, your coaches show as well brought to you by Elvis Hass State Farm. That wrestler in the corner is dedicated and determined to work as hard as he can for his team. His drive and perseverance comes from his core. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have an insurance agent do the same for you and be well, on? With Atlantic head coach Tim Duff, as uh, we are about 15 minutes away from the start of this uh, double duel tonight, Atlantic and Dennis and Sleswig and Harlan here in Atlantic. We're going to see Harlan, Dennis and Sleswig square off first, then Atlantic will take on the Monarchs, followed by Harlan. And Atlantic, a lot of good wrestling going on here this week. A girls tournament tomorrow night. And then the Roland Dyer tournament on Saturday. We'll have the broadcast tonight here to get on Saturday. Coach Duff uh, joining us here. And uh, we start Christmas break, uh, holiday, or the post-Christmas break holiday season here, Coach, tonight. And uh, Harlan and Dennison coming to town. And uh, let's talk about these two teams, first of all. And uh, touch on uh, Dennison Sleswig. Uh, what do you see from this squad? Um, um, you know, thanks for the coverage. Thanks for uh, putting the duel out and streaming the duel. Uh, Cody does a great job. You guys do a great job. I appreciate all the coverage. Um, should be a fun night here. Uh, you know, we've, we've had, had a nice Christmas break, got some time mm -hmm. off, and then we came back and went back to work. And I think the kids, um, they they put in, uh, you know, some nice, some nice, I guess, practices over break. I thought we... Um, you know, continue to, to build some base conditioning, continue to improve on and, and build on some of our tech, uh, some of our techniques. So we're excited to get back on the mat. Uh, fun duel tonight, Harlan, Dennis, and Hawkeye 10 duel. Um, you know, I think you got three teams that are all pretty even. So it should be some exciting matches. Um, you know, I think all three teams have a, a, a few real tough individuals and then some young guys that are um, new faces in the lineup. So it should be, um, you know, real competitive duels, a lot of fun, hopefully uh, some good excitement, and hopefully we come out and wrestle well and see if, see if we can't win a few matches. You know, in a close duel, it's going to come down to those bonus points, see if we can uh, pick up some pins, you know, maybe an unexpected win here or there, and, and then maybe limit, limit our bonus points that we give up and, uh, you know, that's kind of our key for, for us to have success. And, and uh, I, you know, when you're looking at Harlan Dennison, we'll wrestle, uh, Dennison and Harlan will wrestle first, and we'll wrestle uh, Dennison, uh, the second duel tonight. Um, in between that first and second duel, we've got uh, um, Haley Pelzer's bringing out the, the, the Villa dance troupe. Um, and so they're put on a performance, so that's always a lot of fun. And, and, then, and then we're going to take on Dennison. And Dennison, Coach Bradley's been doing a great job. Um, you know, their numbers have gone up and up in the program. He's been recruiting kids and, and getting more kids to, to come out for the, the sport of wrestling. And so they've got a, a, a real solid lineup. Um, they're open at 106, but they're going to fill the rest of their weights, and they're going to fill the weights with uh, some kids that have some experience. I think, um, you know, uh, Coach Bradley's son is, is wrestling 120. You know, he was a freshman last year. I see, he, you know, his 
Uh, results have been improving this year as a sophomore, so I think he'll be a, a tough 120-pounder. Um, you know, I think it's uh, they, they've got a kid at 190, uh, Joel uh, Marillo, that uh, had a nice start to the season. He was another kid that's uh, coming back with some experience. He's a junior, probably one of their tougher kids. Uh, Lewis Chan uh, is rough in the 215 form, another kid that, um, you know, competed hard last year. We saw him uh, get some nice wins during the season. Uh, and, and their heavyweight, uh, you know, their heavyweights have wrestled varsity form now for three years, uh, Plaguey. And, uh, you know, he's always had some competitive matches versus our our heavyweights. I know Evan uh, got the best of him, Sorensen got the best of him a couple times last year, but the kid is a, a real strong kid, and I know he had a real good football season. So, um, you know, that duel in there uh, for us, um, you know, we, we've got some open weights there in, in the middle, so we're going to have to um, pretty much win all the matches that are contested. And so we know we've got to work it out for us against Denison. And then in the third duel, I guess the nightcap will wrestle Harlan, the last duel of the evening. Um, you know, 106, they've got a fan quiz kid. Uh, you know, he, he's, we've seen him around on some little kids uh, tournaments. And so uh, he's been wrestling a couple of years. Uh, 113, probably one of their better wrestlers. Uh, Jesse Jens, a returning state place winner for Harlan last year. Um, he's won a ton of matches. Uh, you know, he's one of those kids that's pretty long, and, uh, you know, he's very dangerous. He's kind of, a, a, I guess, in wrestling they use the term funky. You know, he's got a lot of uh, different attacks, and, and uh, he can put you in danger from just about anywhere on the mat. So you, you've got to really stay in good position. And if you can catch him out of position, you've got to, uh, you know, you, you, you've got to score when you get those opportunities. So he's a tough kid. Like I said, a returning state place winner at 120. Uh, Spencer Fink from Harlan, uh, you know, another young man that's uh, got a lot of experience for him, one of their better wrestlers. At 26, they have a prolix. Um, if you follow at Harlan Wrestling, um, you know, that's, that's the name they've had. Uh, you know, a number of those brothers come through. Uh, at 132, uh, Adam Healer. They've been wrestling a couple different kids, but I think you're seeing the Healer kid. I think he's a, a freshman or sophomore young kid kind of uh, breaking into their lineup. Uh, 138, uh, Aiden R Ransom, um, you know, another young kid. Uh, 144, um, uh, one of their studs, uh, Brody uh, McKinley, uh, wrestled a lot for him, run a lot, won a lot of matches. Um, you know, a state-level kid and, you know, a kid that's right there trying to, you know, win a state medal. So he's he's going to be a handful there at 144. Um, you know, at 150, 157, they've been wrestling a few different kids in at those weights. Uh, Brayton Cooper, we've seen that kid in there. And, um, you know, he's a kid that's wrestled some form. Um, then jumping up to 165, uh, another Bendorf, Brody Bendorf, a, a freshman. Uh, you know, his dad, Adam, is now the, the head coach at, at Harlan, he's been an assistant for a number of years, but he took over for Coach Murtaugh. And Adam's a, a good dude and, and, and a nice nice guy and a good coach. And so that's uh, another Bendorf. They just keep coming through their lineup, I think, every year. For the last uh, eight years, there's been a Bendorf in their lineup. And so Brody's just a freshman. Uh, if you you know, watch any football, he was a freshman playing um, varsity football for Harlan, running running the ball some. So um, he, he's definitely physically, uh, you know, a real – uh, physical kid and a tough-minded kid and, and at 165 uh, you know uh, he's been having a nice start to his freshman season on the mat at 175 uh, Jacobson um, you know another Harlan kid that's uh, pretty dangerous he's one of those kids that um, got a lot of big moves and he can put you in danger uh, you know at 190 and 215 uh, they've had some guys in and out of their lineup uh, you know so we'll see if they get some guys healed up uh, coming out of break sometimes some of those guys that had early season injuries, they can uh, get back on the mat a little bit. But uh, Aiden Blatt uh, has been wrestling 190 for him. And at 215, they have, have have a Gibbles kid that's been wrestling for him. Um, and then at uh, 285, Austin Spray, uh, you know, another kid that's uh, returning uh, letter winner wrestler for him that's big, strong kid. So um, should be an exciting, like I said, both duels I think are going to be um, you know, a lot of lot of action, a lot of uh, close matches, and just some interesting uh, matchups when you start looking at, uh, you know, will teams move guys around and see if we can fill a few weights. And, and like I said, if we can uh, try to limit bonus points, uh, we're going to have a chance to, to, you know, stay in the duel. And so um, should be an exciting, exciting night. We're excited to host, and, um, you know, we're thankful for uh, 
Haley Pelzer bringing up Villa Dance and putting on a performance and honor our seniors tonight. So we're going to honor uh, Tay Jordan and, and mm. Cohen Bruce as seniors, um, you know, senior wrestlers that have, have you know put in uh, four years of work. And so we're excited to, to get to recognize them uh, on senior night, our last home duel. And uh, so it should be a lot of fun. And we're going to turn around and turn our attention to Saturday Rolling Dyer. We can talk about that later. But we're excited to get back on the mat, Tom. Yeah, big meet on Saturday with 18 teams coming in. Always a great meet, a lot of competition uh, on a Saturday. Coach, you have a number of wrestlers that uh, also competing well. We talked about that over the weekend. I know um, uh, Aiden uh, Smith is off to a great start, only one loss on the year, a fifth-place finish to the Classic in Council Bluffs. And, uh, boy, he's uh, picking up where he left off a year ago. Yeah, Aiden's probably been, uh, you know, you got a kid that's a two-time place winner, got the six as a freshman and second as a sophomore. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, he's highly motivated to get back and get another uh, chance to get on that podium and see if he can take another step forward there. And he's been wrestling, um, you know, uh, he's been wrestling like it. He's been wrestling like an upperclassman for us and, and, and really doing a good job and, and uh, um, being a leader for our young guys. And, and then you look at, you know, uh, Tay Jordan, a kid that uh, uh, at 106, you know, he was a champion at Joe Fitch and uh, won a championship at, at the Rolling Story. So he's wrestling well as a senior, um, practicing well, doing the right things. I think um, all those things that, you know, he's put in, um, you know, three years of work to, to get this opportunity. And, and um, you're seeing Tay starting to see some of the, the benefit of everything he's put in. Um, you know, that's the cool thing about the sport of wrestling is that, as you progress and as you improve, um, you know, uh, over time you're going to start seeing more results. And, and it's about being consistent and, and uh, you know, believing in yourself and, and uh, working, uh, you know, believing in the process of, mm. of what our program's all about. You know, we're, we want to see kids come in and, um, you know, watch them improve and, and grow and, and develop and, and get tougher mentally. And I think Tay's a great example of that as a senior. And, um, you know, Evan Sorensen at, at 285, you know, he's, he's had a nice start to his season. Hopefully he can, uh, you know, continue to, to build on it second half. Uh, you look at a, a Braxton Haas at 113, um, you know, he's had a nice start to a season returning uh, state qualifier for us. So those four have really been uh, mainstays for our program, and, and, and they've, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, the guys that we look to to, to be leaders and point scorers. Or, and uh, then you throw in a Cohen Bruce and a Donovan Hedrington. Those guys up top are improving. Um, you know, Cohen's showing great senior leadership. He's one of those kids that, like I said, put in four years, and, and his uh, progression over those, um, you know, three, four years has just been outstanding. And, and so hopefully he's primed to have a great um, senior second half. And so those are the kind of the stories that are neat to watch unfold. And, and it's not by happenstance. It's not by accident. Those kids are busting their tails and, and they're doing the right things. And so um, it's easy as a coach to, to root for those guys. Mm. Um, you know, it's easy as a fan to root for those guys. <laughs> they're fun to watch compete and, and just great kids and great young men. And so um, hopefully we'll see them, uh, you know, get a good start to their second half season tonight. Well, we're looking forward to it, Coach. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you after the uh, double duel tonight. Of course, a big day coming up on Saturday as well. Lots of great wrestling here. Uh, in Atlantic, and you still have time to get out here to the Atlantic High School Gymnasium uh, here this evening. Big crowd uh, on hand. Coach, thank you, and best of luck tonight. Yeah, thanks a lot, Tom. We'll be back with uh, more coverage. We'll have the Harlan Dennison duel coming up, uh, followed by Atlantic Dennison and Atlantic Harlan here. Cody Weaver will have the play by play. I'll be alongside as well with the broadcast live video streamed at westerniowatoday.com, powered by Nishnunet and also here on 95.7 FM. This is the Elvis Haas State Farm Insurance Coaches Show. We'll be back with wrestling coverage right after this. That wrestler in the corner is dedicated and determined to work as hard as he can for his team. His drive and perseverance comes from his core. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have an insurance agent do the same for you and be on your team? Here at Elvis Haas State Farm, we're in your corner to help you with your insurance on your auto, home, farm, business, life, and financial services. We help you understand your insurance and show you the benefits of bundling all of your coverages with just one company. Put us on your team here at Elvis Haas State Farm, one half block west of the courthouse, or call 712-243-4824.
Rolling Hills Bank and Trust. Here at Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, we're dedicated to agriculture. That's why we offer various services that fit your growing ag needs. All our decisions are made locally by experienced lenders that truly understand the unique challenges of your operation. We're large enough to handle all your lending needs, yet small enough not to lose that personal touch. Our dedicated loan officers want to work with you to help your operation grow and thrive. Feel free to stop in and talk about how we can help your business succeed. Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Now, back to Atlantic Trojan Sports on KS95.7 and live stream at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome back to Atlantic High School here on KS95.7 or watching live on Iowa Western Today, Western Iowa Today TV. I can't believe I messed up our own website. <laughs> Western Iowa Today TV.com. I'm Austin West, joined alongside Cody Weaver. That was your Elvis Has Coaches Show. Tom Robinson doing a great job with that. As always, we're already through one duel here tonight. Dennison Schleswig and Harlan already faced off. Harlan getting the win in that one, 46 to 33. Next up, we will have Dennison Schleswig versus Atlantic. And Cody, what should people look for in that Matt, duel? Well, we're going to start out here at 285 pounds. Um, you know, it looks like the matchup looks like it's going to be plaguey. And then we'll start with the, you know, the little guys here at 106 and kind of work our way all the way through the lineup. And, you know, we'll have some open weights there in the center. So um, as a Trojan fan, you're going to want to try to build a lead um, early um, with those bonus points and make it to where it's, you know, the, the forfeits don't come up. And really your head-to-head -head matches, you want to capitalize on those and have those take advantage of open weights. So... We'll, uh, we'll see what happens in this uh, second duel, and then that'll kind of give us maybe a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like um, when we take on Harlan there in that third duel of the night. Yeah, there are just two JV matches uh, for this duel, so I don't think we'll see anyone maybe jump over to that left mat uh, like we did in the last duel. So fingers crossed that we don't because we don't want to miss any of the matches and uh, have to force Cody to call two at once here, really test his <laughs> skills. Uh, to go that way, but again, it'll be interesting to see how Atlantic and Denison face off here as we're still cleaning off the mats here, haven't even had our captains come out yet. So we'll take another quick break here with you on KS95.7 and WesternIowaToday.com, your home for Atlantic Trojan Sports. At Second Street Auto, it's our mission to get you back on the road fast. And it all starts with free local towing. Once you're back at the shop, we talk you through your car repair with a free and fair estimate. We do everything in-house so you know who's working on your car. Our Hercules tires come with free road hazard repair, free rotation for the life of the tires, and a free alignment check. And nobody can beat our transmission rebuild and repair experts. Brakes, tune-ups, oil changes, preventative maintenance, and service work make Second Street your first stop. At Outfitters Plus in Atlantic, you'll find all the latest in custom apparel and headwear. Head to Outfitters and work with the design pros to make your customized tees, team apparel, and personalized swag for your business a reality. Whether it's fan apparel for your high school or youth sports teams, your business, or you just want to make something your own, you'll have everyone saying, where'd you get that? Don't forget, Outfitters will also add your group store online to make ordering a breeze. Get personalized at Outfitters Plus Outlet Store in Atlantic. Stop by today. Get to the Super Bowl for Globe Bowling on Friday and Saturday nights. Perfect for birthdays, reunions, family and friend get-togethers, and date nights. They even have bumpers and ramps for the little ones. Globe Bowling, all the glow-in-the-dark fun you love. Plus, the friendly competition of bowling makes for a great night. Call Dan to schedule your next party at 243-4656. Globe Bowling on Friday and Saturday nights at the Super Bowl. Highway 71 in Atlantic. To Atlantic Trojan Sports on KS95.7 and live stream at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome back to Atlantic High School for Atlantic Trojan Wrestling. Austin West, Cody Weaver here with you. And we are getting ready for this Denison Schleswig versus Atlantic duel. Denison ended up winning the coin flip here at the beginning, so they'll get to choose who they're sending out and that's going to be a big difference here in this one yeah and it looks like uh we have Sorensen coming up here for atlantic at 285 uh plaguey's got his shirt off looks like he's just got a 
coaches shake hands shake there and he's coming over to check in also so we'll start right out here at 285 pounds in the Atlantic's first duel uh, Denison's second duel here and your wrestler announcements brought to you by Elvis Haas State Farm always in your corner as we're getting this duel started at 285 pounds Introducing the wrestler here, and it's Evan Sorensen again taking on uh, Plaguey of Denison. Sorensen right away with a single, switches to a half as he's taking him down to his back. Now he settles back in, reverse cradle or reverse half. Settles in here, elevates that head, exposes those shoulders, and gets a fall here with just 20 seconds into that first period. So. Atlantic will start out with a 6-0 advantage here in this duel over Denison Sluswig. You can see why the Trojan fans love swords. And I mean, 20-second pit, you can't go wrong with that in any case scenario, especially when you're starting off the duel that strong. Yeah, and it looks like uh, on our side, we're going to move some people around. So you see Colin Harris coming out here at 106 pounds, um, and he's going to take the forfeit. It looks like for Atlantic as Denison Sluswig's open. So Colin Harris there at 106 with a forfeit. We're going to bump up to 113, and it's going to be Tay Jordan of Atlantic. And he's going to be taking on uh, Trey Hartwig, a freshman of Denison Sluswig. Both wrestlers getting their leg bands on. Jordan's set here. And it is senior night tonight, though, for those two seniors Atlantic has, uh, Jordan and uh, Cohen Bruce here. We'll see coming up uh, later on here in the duel. Tay with a uh, kind of a drop down there. Single front headlock there by Hartwig of Denison Sluswig. He's got that, he switches to a single, now switches to a double, elevates him, but you see uh, really a lot of talent there. Um, it was a nice job by Hartwig there, um, kind of caught Tay's leg and it reversed, uh, you know, took him back over to his back, but it looked like for a little bit while there, Jordan was gonna be in trouble. Um, Jordan gets that takedown, uh, gets the three near fall now, releases that, tilts him back up for an additional three near fall. So it's an 8-0 now, uh, 55 seconds into this first period. We're gonna go out of bounds and come back to the center here with a minute and one left here at 113 pounds. And yeah, that just kind of roll there on the outer side it was looked like Jordan might've been in trouble there and then just rolls him right through, got those <laughs> back points and now he's got a huge lead. Yeah, Jordan jumps in for a single there kind of comes out the middle there, tries to turn and face, gets that right shoulder through, grabs the arm, goes for a cradle here, uh, locks up that cradle, gonna sit through, stack Hartwig up on his shoulders there. Hartwig doing a good job um, on his head there, you know, avoiding the fall. Jordan settles in here, it'll scoots a little bit more. Jordan now releases that. And it's going to be 13. Jordan now switches to a near side cradle, head in the side, has him stacked up, gets the fall here over Bradley, or excuse me, over Hartwig here of Denison Sleswig. Huge win for Tay Jordan. You love to get pins on senior night. There's nothing better than that. <laughs> and especially now that Atlantic jumping out to, I believe that's an 18. Oh, lead here in this duel, especially with those middle weights, like you said, uh, when we started being open for Atlantic, they're gonna have to move some guys around. That's a huge, huge start for the Trojans. Yeah, I mean, Atlantic shows open there at 20, so obviously they're gonna move some people around here and hopefully have somebody that they can put in at 20 pounds here. So yeah, Braxton Haas here now coming up for Atlantic, and he's gonna be taking on uh, Grave of Denison or Jaden Bra Bradley, I'm sorry, of Dennis and Sluswig. Outside single shot there, attempt by Haas. Not able to get to that leg, now it comes over the top, throws the half in and kind of drives into him, gets him put on his back here. 
Going to get three near fall here. Settles in here, gets the shoulder exposed here. Not quite able to catch him, readjusts here. Tightens it up a little bit. Keeps that arm. Going to jump back over to the opposite side there. Reaches over under the head there, grabs the shoulder, now walks back towards the head here. Going to walk the shoulder, try to get him in a front headlock here, get that tightened up, get that shoulder exposed here. We've got plenty of time left here, a minute five to go here in that first period. And Braxton Haas with that fall here, 59 seconds into the first period here, 120 pounds. So Atlantic starts out with a forefoot and a fall, fall. Or four, two, uh, a fall, four, four fit, fit, two fall, fall, fall yep. yeah. And a big one there, because we saw Bradley in that last duel. He was great he defensively. Great, yeah. And he was going against the former state qualifier as well, but that one just, Haas was able to manhandle him down to a pit early in the first period. So look for some good things out of Haas the rest of the year. And it looks like we'll get a match at 126. Not sure who it's going to end up being here for Dennison. My track wrestling never wants to update in time. Yeah, it's <clears throat> Aiden Smith out there for Atlantic. Smith right away with a high crotch, drops in. Steps over. Inside leg there. This is Jackson Gravy of Denison Sleswig. Both wrestlers neutral now, an escape there by Gravy. Smith out front there, headlock. Tries to pop him by there, and Gravy doing a good job defensively, going the same direction. Um, Smith really working out front here now, Gravy in on a single. Grabs the other. Smith tries to reach inside that belly there and twist. Use that leverage and Gravy uh, with his head stuck in the middle there, not off the side. Smith doing a good job pushing, getting those hips back. They're going to go out of bounds, come back to the center. Minute two to go here, 2 1. Score. Smith with an underhook there on the right side of Gravy. Drops into a single, elevates that single. Takes him down, steps over, quite, quite, can't quite get that Turk locked up there. Smith right now reaches across the head, grabs that far arm, locks up a far side cross face cradle there. Gonna try to stack him up here, goes hip to hip, sits back. And Gravy doing a good job breaking that, but Smith gonna still get two near fall out of that at least. So six, six, one. Advantage now, Smith here with 23 seconds to go in the first period. Gravy goes back down that bottom position. Gets set, Smith's gonna cover left side here. Right away chops that left arm, deep waist with the right. Works on a chicken wing here. On the left side, looks like he's gonna go across, tilt him up. Not quite able to catch there and Gravy doing a good job. Um, Smith now with both legs in. As time's gonna expire here in the first period, so. It looked a little dangerous there too. The beginning looked like Smith was maybe getting up a little too high, but was able to get those legs in for the boots and just kind of ride there till the end of the first period. Thought maybe it could have gotten a reversal and maybe put Gravy back in this one. Yeah, and you see Smith uh, choosing to start the bottom here in that second period. It'll be a caution, it looks like, on uh, Gravy on the side of the stomach rather than right in the center of the section there. He covers that left side again right away. Smith up to his feet, peels wrists. Gravy trying to step over the leg. Gonna get called for stalling here pretty quick if he doesn't return him, gets a stall call. Smith escapes right away, goes in, ties up the front. Gonna circle towards the head there, keep that arm. And Gravy doing a good job. You see him with those hands locked, 
on that single of Smith there. And Smith with the ankle pick, continue to drive to get him off his base here. And has the cradle locked up here and stacks Gravy up. But uh, Gravy kind of squirming out the backside here. Smith holding on. He's going to hook that inside right leg there to maintain control. Now he stacks him up again on the shoulder here and Grave doing a good job rolling through. Power half here now by Smith out front. He's gonna go over the head and under the arm and go opposite direction for what we used to call a okie dokie. No back points awarded there. Um, able to roll through that and not quite catch him. So, you know, Grave doing a good job here defensively. It's 11-1 match and he's definitely getting his work out. Uh, but so far has avoided the fall here. Cradle locked back up, settled in here. The grave again is able to break that. Turns and faces Smith, uh, fist, uh, Smith here. Smith is going to kind of ride this out for a, probably a stall call if he can. There's 29 seconds to go here, and Smith holding on with his hands locked. Grave doing a good job. You're going to be a stalemate there. So Smith will maintain control there on top. And Smith knew his hips maybe weren't in the best position there and kind of held on for that stall call. So and again, smart move to there. Yeah, it's 13 1 now. Um, 18 to go here in the second period. The grave is down and set there. Smith will cover right side this time. By the way, drops the ankle, chops the left arm. Stacks the head there, goes power half on the right side, hooks the right boot in, has the left boot in. Going to get some back exposure here, and this is going to be the match as time expires here in the second period. So that'll be a five-point uh, match. Uh, excuse me, five point, five team points there for Atlantic as Smith wins by Tech Fall. So it's... Uh, it's going to be 29-0 now, Atlantic with that lead. Going to jump up to 132 pounds, and it's going to be Jaden Harder coming out for Atlantic. And a square of Denison Sleswig. This is where it gets interesting, really. Atlantic's kind of got to try to hold on to these. These lower mid weights, because again, they got those three opens at 50, 57, and 65, all of which Denison's ready to go and can throw some guys in at. And so, if they're not able to come out of these with some big points, or even if they take losses here, it's going to be tough for them to kind of hold on towards the end. Yeah, and I, like I said in the beginning, you know, you, you want to start out and get as many bonus points as you can. We did get a forfeit at 106. We started out with the fall at 285, and then pin, pin pin and uh, harder here with a nice takedown elevates returns him to the mat chops the arm puts a half in gonna drive forward here needs to take his time here not getting too big a hurry now switches to a cradle uh, kind of a cross face cradle gonna settle back here can't quite get that locked up and in a decent enough position here Again, chicken wing there by Harder is able to get that locked in. Goes opposite wrist here, taking his time and really nice job by Harder there settling those hips uh, to get two points awarded there. He goes back to that cross face cradle now. He's on the outside of the arm though, rather than the inside of the arm. Uh, reaching across the body really, you know, you look at Harder and he's a long lanky kid for 132 pounds and um, Able to keep him broke down here. We're just under a minute to go here. It's four nothing right now. Harder with that advantage. Um, sits him back here. He's got the chicken wing. He's got the, his right wrist tied up on the left wrist. Got the chicken wing and he's gonna try to circle the head here. And really a square doing a good job here fighting that. And you see Harder trying to readjust, tightening that chicken wing up here and gonna take a big step over. Now he's going to jump across the opposite side, try to suck him over, tilt him back over, get some shoulders exposed there. A square tries to settle, and Harder just waits for him, adjust, sucks him back, now goes opposite half. You see him squeezing there, doing a nice job on his toes, head up in the air, and uh, exactly what you want to see from a freshman there, getting that extra pressure on those shoulder blades. That one, one of the quickest pins we've seen called <laughs> tonight, like, 
hardly waited for that second shoulder to come down, but he was ready to go with the call. So make that pin number four, excuse me, five in this duel for, excuse me, that is four. It is number four for Atlantic here, just in one duel here already. And again, they jump out to a 35 nothing dual lead. This is uh, Chase Williams of Denison Sluswig taking on Carter Hadley here at 138 pounds. Yeah, team score here, um, Atlantic up 35-0. You can see on the scoreboard on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Hadley working on <clears throat> circling, trying to work on wrist control and position here. Williams has the right arm of Hadley, and we talked about headgears earlier in the last duel, where it would come down over his eyes and under his chin, and uh, having some issues of our own here. So nice double leg shot there by Hadley. He's able to finish that, and but Williams doing a good job hipping into Hadley. Almost had Hadley going in the back direction there, but Hadley able to come back around behind there. Hadley now chopping that left arm. Trying to get it locked up there. Looks like he's going to work on a tilt here. You see him grab that left wrist. Not able to quite get that chopped here. Williams comes up to his feet here. Kind of a tripod sits out. Hadley doing a good job circling around behind here and maintaining that control. Down to a minute here. Halfway through this first period. It's 2-0. Carter Hadley with the advantage again. He gets that left arm, tries to tilt him up, tilt Williams up, but not able to quite catch Williams in that bread basket, kind of control those hips, and his hips were able to roll through and avoid that near fall. Right on the edge of the mat here, and they're going to go almost out of bounds. Nice chop there by Hadley. Hadley, again, wanting to tilt that now, grabs the chicken wing, releases that. Peels the left wrist out, tries to peel that out, gets it posted. He's going to potentially release him here. Hadley still maintains control. Going to be probably a one-point escape here for Williams soon. Both wrestlers back on their feet here with 10 to go. Hadley in on a shot. Another double leg shot, able to step over, work his way up. Just as time kind of expires here in the first period, in this first period, 4-1. It will be Denison's choice here. Williams will have his choice, and he's going to defer to the third period. Hadley's going to go down that bottom position to start the second period. And kind of an interesting choice to defer it here when you're down by three. You almost want to be like, well, maybe we should try to get our points now instead of holding off and letting this lead kind of expand on us. But uh, again, like I said, interesting choice, but Denison will take top of this one again, Chase Williams uh, over Carter Hadley of Atlantic. It looks like we're going to start wrestling varsity on both matches here now. On your screen, you've got 138 pounds. And on the mat to the west, we're going to be at 144. It'll be Calvin Hayes of Atlantic taking on. Let's see if we can get a name here for you. It's 5-1 now, Hadley, with that escape here in the second period. It'll be Francisco Escalante over on the far mat for 144 for Denison. Hayes with a quick takedown there about 15 seconds into that first period. Escalante back up to his feet, uh, but Hayes is able to stay in on that single leg. They go out of bounds. Back to the match here on your screen. That's Williams in on a single. A real nice sprawl there by Hadley. Stuffs the head, able to come around behind here for a two-point takedown. So it's a 7-1 match right now. Hadley with that advantage here at 138 pounds. Hadley working two-on-one on, on that left forearm. Comes off to the left side here now and 
You see Williams on the bottom kind of balling up a little bit there, and Hadley needs to get a half potentially on that right side, get off the right side and work something. He's working on that right arm here, tries to punch through to get that chicken wing in. Now he's got the opposite wrist. Um, again, he's got the arm not quite where it needs to be against the chest, but he's continuing to work forward. Needs to take a big step around that head, big step around the head. Working forward here, stacks him up and gets the fall here at 138 pounds. So Carter Hadley with the fall over Chase Williams. And I'm gonna switch the screen here real quick and get the other one here um, until we get set on this match here. And it is Calvin Hayes getting the fall here at 144 pounds over Escalante of Denison Sleswig. And if you listen to KSOM in the mornings, I, for the midday show anyways, myself and Zach Collins, we do our higher and lower show. We decide today, you know what, we're going to do how many pins Atlanta gets. <laughs> uh, we set it at four or less or five or more, and they've cleared that already here in the first duel. So Zach will be very happy uh, to win that one here today. So here at uh, 150, it's Draven Smith of Atlantic taking on James Lemon of Denison Sluswig. Lemon in on an outside single shot there, goes opposite direction, dumps Smith down. You're gonna go ahead and stuff the head, release him back up to his feet here. You look at these two wrestlers, Lemon is a 150 pounder and Smith, uh, you know, closer to 38 pounds. So giving up some weight here um, and also a little bit of age. Nice. Leg extension there by Smith, able to break that first initial outside single shot, but Lemon able to kind of come in and finish that. He's working on trying to tilt Smith up here. Tilt Smith up. Smith is able to roll through and avoid shoulder exposure. You see him kind of reach in between here, post that outside arm. Doing a good job of getting keeping that back exposed. Now he's trying to stack Smith up. Smith doing a good job keeping hips high here. And also locking that. 40 seconds to go here in the first period. 4-1 right now. Lemon of Dennis and Sluswig. Smith doing a nice job kind of reaching back over his own back, getting that chicken wing broken free. Kind of come up to his knees and his base here. 25 to go here. Smith now up to his feet. Lemon releases here. So 4-2 match here with 18 to go here. A shot there by Smith. Lemon able to kind of hip into him. Steps over. Smith doing a good job. Rolling through. Two points exposed there. But looks like we forfeited at 157 to Dennis and Sleswig. Austin, if you can get a name there at 157, if that's come through yet. It's Javier Medina of Denison got that forfeit at 157. Okay, so it's 47-6 now. It looks like our next match is coming up here on the west mat, which is going to be uh, Donovan Hedrington. Into the first period here on your screen. Smith is going to choose down here. So it's 6-2 right now. You see the... Wrestler from Denison going to release that. Smith comes up to his feet, so it's a 6-3 match. Working on wrist control and hand fighting. And over at 165, it ended up being a double forfeit at 165 for these two teams. So an interesting look uh, to see there as well. Yeah, so no points awarded at that point then. It would be zero points awarded. Lemon in on a deep double, able to come up behind there and finish. Tries to chop the right wrist of Smith there. Smith posting that outside arm, trying to keep from going. Rolls Smith over on his back. Gets some near fall here. Lemon adjust. Gets two near fall here. So 10 to three. Lemon trying to get a Turk in there, opposite. Get, doesn't quite get the leg hook there. He hooks the leg, 
of Smith, tries to roll through, catches Smith on his back for two more near fall. So 12-3. Lemon keeps that right arm. Lemon now right on the right side there with a half. Trying to walk forward, Smith grabbing that right leg, gonna try to turn and face here. Not able to, Lemon switches to a cross face cradle, releases that, chops that wrist back. Again, breaks Smith back down flat. Lemon with a chicken wing in on that right side again. Reaches that opposite wrist, walks towards the head here. 40 to go. Big step there by Lemon. Going to get a count. Looks like three near fall here by uh, two near fall as time expired. I'm not sure the clock shows 34 seconds, but it seemed like it did take a long time to get the start of the match going here. So third period, it's Lemon's choice. He wants to go neutral up on his feet. 12-3 advantage for Lemon of Denison over Smith of Atlantic. Over on our other mat right now, mat right now, Donovan Hedrington of Atlantic versus Ismail Alfaro of Denison. They are tied at zero with 25 left to go in the first period of 175. Smith back exposed again there by Lemon. Lemon trying to catch that arm and adjust, try to go chest on chest, reaches through here now. Smith able to belly back out. Chicken wing again by Lemon. Lemon adjusts here, tries to stack Smith up, sits through. Smith able to roll. Roll through here. And you see a little bit of leverage there by Smith uh, with the kind of whizzer on that, in that wrist there. Lemon now takes it cautiously, steps back through and Gets back in behind here with just under a minute to go in the third period. 17-3 right now. Lemon with that advantage over Smith. Forty-four to go here. 17-3 again. Lemon with that advantage. Wants to try to get some more back points tilted up. Smith doing a good job keeping those shoulders from getting exposed, bellying out. Again, trying to do everything he can do to help his team from a score standpoint here. The other mat, it is Donovan Hedrickson with a 3 nothing advantage now. Um, he had an escape there at the beginning of the second period. They're about a minute 25 to go here. You see Lemon trying to adjust himself here to get a fall. Smith doing a good job, everything he can do to try to fight off his back here. Lemon readjusting, ends up getting the fall there with seven seconds left in that third period. So the lemon of Denison Slusswing here at 150 pounds winning by fall. You're seeing on your screen now, Donovan Hedrickton. Again, 3-0 match now. Hedrickton had a takedown there towards the end of the first period. Started on bottom in the second period with an escape. Kind of a shuck by attempt there by Hedrington. Hedrington continues to drive forward here. They're going to be a stall call on Dennison there at 175 pounds. Down to 47 to go here on the clock in the second period. Hedrington with that 3-0 lead. Kind of grabs a headlock here. Takes him directly to his back. Needs to settle in here. There he does a good job readjusting, working back. Catches him out front here. 25 to go here. That's a five point move there by Hedrington. Four point move, got two near fall and a takedown. 15 to go, second period, seven nothing right now. And it's gonna be Hedrington with that lead as he goes into the third period. Over on our right mat at 190, we had Joel Murillo of Denison. He took a forfeit at 190. And so we'll have our 215 matchup uh, occurring over on this right side mat. It should be our last match of the duel. Yeah, we'll jump back over there as uh, Cohen Bruce, your second senior tonight, um, is coming out here. Cohen Bruce! 
So it looks like it's gonna be Luis Chan. No, Alex Correa. No, it is uh, Nito of Denison Sluswig. I don't know, they've got the wrong name in there twice. They got Zayden Parker listed twice and Zayden wrestled a JV match here on the left side earlier. Bruce with a collar tie there, some separation. About 40 seconds into this first period here at 215 pounds. We had team score Atlantic 47, Denison Sluswig 18. The last two matches of the duel are on the mat. It's Hedrington leading 9-1 in his match with a minute 20 to go. And Bruce is just starting here a minute into that first period. 0-0 uh, zero, zero score here. Taking on Nito of Denison Sluswig. Some separation, they come back to the center. 40 to go. Collar tie there by Bruce, snap down. Underhook now on the left side, tries to pull him back down forward. Not able to, good job on, by Nito there. Wrist control on the right side. And Donovan Hedrington wins by a fall here with 41 seconds left in the third period. Nine seconds to go here now, Bruce and Nito tied here at 215 pounds. This will be the last night of the duel. Got no points awarded there as time expired. Uh, you saw Bruce take him down uh, to his back at least, but uh, not able to cover in time before time expired. Yeah, a close one too, just took him right to his back with just a few steps behind him uh, as that time expired. So Bruce's choice here, and he wants to go down that bottom position. He's down and set. Nito covers left side. Right away, there's going to be a caution on Nito. Uh, kind of started on that left arm a little bit before the whistle blew. Bruce up to his feet here. Kind of sits back, works on peel and wrist, comes back up to his feet. Turns and faces for a one-point escape here just 10 seconds into the second period. So that's your lead right there, 1-0. Cohen Bruce with the advantage over Nito right now. Both wrestlers on their feet. A lot of uh, pushing and shoving kind of in that first period. And a takedown towards the very end as time expired, actually, by... Bruce uh, with no points awarded. So it's a 1-0 match at this point. Minute 20 to go in the second period. Bruce with a single now, switches to a double. Needs to lower his level, use his back and his legs instead of trying to use his back. Coaches are like, there he goes. Gets him taken down to his back. Nito doing a good job bellying out, though, getting back to that belly. And I'm not sure if Bruce is a football player, <laughs> but that's a perfect form tackle. If you're sitting there, he had it right around, like right behind his hamstrings. Just lower the level and drive through him instead of just kind of sticking your butt up and planting yeah. your feet in the dirt. Yeah, I think he was resting, waiting for the right moment. <laughs> I'm not sure. He is a, a football player, had a good football year this year for Atlantic. Played defensive end a lot. Bruce, you see, covering left side there, ankle pick on the right. Working on two on one on the left side. Works forward here, has a half on the right side. Gonna try to come out front here. Working on peeling that left wrist out. Probably gonna arm bar that up. You see him barring that up on the right side. Now, he's gonna adjust here, tries to reach through, is able to rock that. We call that the Air Force where you're able to reach through, lock your hand on the opponent's hand. You come around front then, flip them over, and they can't get their arm from underneath their back. And usually it's tight enough that it's a, a fall here. But we're running out of time here with 10 to go in the second period. 3-0 right now, Bruce with that advantage. 
and time's going to expire. We'll go to the third period and we'll see what Nita's choice is here. Nita's choice, he wants to go neutral, go on his feet here this third period. So Bruce able to get that uh, takedown escape in the second period, takedown in the second period, rode him out, Nito out there in the second period, was working towards a near fall, uh, but not able to get the back, back exposed enough. Underhook there by Bruce, collar tie opposite side, switches collar ties, switches to that single, goes opposite direction, works his way up here, kind of up the back for that two point takedown. Five nothing right now, Bruce with an advantage, goes power half on the right side. Nito looks like a strong kid, You're gonna try to avoid that as much as he can here. Gets that peeled off the top of the head, gets his hand back. Bruce working on the left side, arm now two on one. Halfway through the third period here. Chops that left arm. Inside wrist control on the left side, deep waist on the right side. Sit out there by Nito, sat out right back to his belly. Bruce doing a good job covering. Now working on peeling that left wrist out. Gonna try to bar that up like he did earlier in that second period using all the leverage you can, kind of coming out front here, and you see Nito going opposite direction, posting with that outside leg, and basically just putting all the weight on his arm and keeping that from getting pile, uh, pulled out there, so. Bruce now working on the right arm. He's got it barred up again. You see him using good hip pressure there. He kind of comes around front here and switches to a half on the left side, releases that arm, Switches, rolls, able to roll him over, but kind of gets hips caught there. Needle rolls through, and Bruce uh, is able to luckily get a boot in there and kind of keep from getting rolled through, but he's really in a high position right now where Nito's going to come out the back door, but Bruce did a good job grabbing that arm, pulling himself back over the top. So it'll be Bruce with that 7-0 advantage here, 215 pounds. Yeah. I, it was such a good match. I thought we were still in the second period. I'm like, all right, I'm ready for another period. Let's go. I'm loving this. And that one going to end the duel here. And Atlantic takes a big one there. The final score uh, should end up being with that decision 50 to 12 because the double forfeit scratches across. So nobody zero. really yeah. uh, gets any points. So it'll be 50 12 the win for Atlantic. Recapping our matches at 285, Evan Sorensen of Atlantic got a fall over Tony Zamora of Denison. At 106, Colin Harris of Atlantic took a forfeit. At 113, Tate Jordan of Atlantic over Trey Hartwig of Denison with a fall. At 120, Braxton Haas of Atlantic fall over Jaden Bradley of Denison. At 126, Aiden Smith of Atlantic over Jackson Grave of, with a tech fall. At 132, Jaden Harder, Atlantic, over Aiden Escara, Denison, with a fall. 138, Carter Hadley, Atlantic, over Chase Williams of Denison, another fall. At 150, James Lemon, Denison, over Drevin Smith of Atlantic, with a fall. 150, uh, again, that was Lemon. At 165 was our double forfeit. At 175, Donovan Hedrington of Atlantic, over Ishmael Alfaro of Denison, with a fall. At 190, Joel Murillo of Denison, forfeit. 215, Cohen Bruce of Atlantic. Lewis Chan is what I have down here on track of Denison, but it ended up being a different wrestler, I believe, as well. So, And we saw that one ended in a decision. And so that's your recap for the first duel of Atlantics, anyway, second here of the night. Uh, we'll take a quick break here on KS95.7 and WesternIowaToday.com. We'll be back with your Trojan Wrestling co coverage coming up. They want to know... Cass Health in Atlantic, Iowa is a nationally recognized hospital, and we are proud of the awards and all of our recent accomplishments. But do you know what drives us to be the very best? You. We're passionate about helping our patients heal and feel their very best at any age and any stage of life. Cass Health, neighbors caring for neighbors. 
Elkhart Plastics and Atlantic has a career opportunity for you. They're currently looking to hire first and second shift oven operators, first shift assemblers and maintenance personnel, along with competitive pay and shift differential offered for second shift. Elkhart Plastics offers medical, dental, vision, company paid life and disability plans, as well as vacation, paid holidays, education reimbursement and retirement savings plans. Go to MyersIndustries.com forward slash careers to view openings and fill out an application. Elkhart Plastics is an equal opportunity and affirmative action employer. Rolling Hills Bank and Trust. Here at Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, we're dedicated to agriculture. That's why we offer various services that fit your growing ag needs. All our decisions are made locally by experienced lenders that truly understand the unique challenges of your operation. We're large enough to handle all your lending needs, yet small enough not to lose that personal touch. Our dedicated loan officers want to work with you to help your operation grow and thrive. Feel free to stop in and talk about how we can help your business succeed. Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. Now, back to Atlantic Trojan Sports on KS95.7 and live stream at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome back. I'm Austin West, joined alongside Cody Weaver here at Atlantic High School for our Atlantic Triangular. We've already had Denison and Harlan face off and Atlantic face off against Denison. Atlantic getting a dominant win in the second duel. Harlan getting a dominant one over Denison as well. And so we're already into our final duel of the night here. It's been going by quick because we've got the two mats going here. we got two mats going, so they have doubled up a little bit. Um, you know, in between the first and second duel, we had the dancers. Now we've got senior night. It looks like there's uh, one cheerleader and I think two wrestlers that are going to be recognized here, uh, which is always nice. You know, the kids have put in a lot of time. It's nice to show appreciation for their parents and um, plus, it's good to get the parents out there and embarrass them in front of the whole crowd. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That was one of my favorite parts of senior night. It's like, all right, you actually have to make appearance in front of uh, the fans because my dad was not a public appearance guy by any means. My mom, she, yeah, she did concession stands. She helped at tournaments, whatever it was. Yeah, she did it. Dad, not so much. So that was like the first time people were like, oh, so that's what your dad looks like. All right. And so. Yeah, senior night, great recognition for parents, great recognition for the seniors themselves as well. And it's a great night for the community, I mean, just all around. Yeah, thankful, thankful for the kids that participate in the extracurricular activities. Um, it's kind of what keeps the, the school going and the town going. And um, some of the kids put a lot of effort into it and a lot of time. And that basically their academics and their athletics become their job through high school. Unless you become some of those kids that do uh, detasseling over the summer. But other than that, this is sports, athletics, grades. Those are your jobs uh, when you're in high school. And so, again, like you said, it's great to get them recognition. Again, we got one cheerleader and then two wrestlers. We already saw the two wrestlers, Tay Jordan and Cohen Bruce as well. I'd try to read the cheerleader's name off her poster over there. It looks like Kaylee Hathy, it looks like, if I can read it correctly. I but can't read it. I'm not even going to try. <laughs> you're, you're better at names, so I thought maybe you would recognize it if I butchered it a little bit. But let's see. Is it even on? It's not even on our list here with the rosters I bet either. It's, I'm guessing it's Mary McCurdy based upon the, the mom and the dad. That's my guess. I guess. Oh. I didn't think my vision was that bad off that poster because that looks like a big K or an R, but if it is Mary McCurdy, yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe tomorrow's over and under should be who could read the furthest. Yeah, year. there we go, <laughs> me or Zach. Usually mine's pretty good. I am pretty successful at that. And it will be Mary McCurdy. Mary there we McCurdy, go. Yeah. So. so she'll come out here and you know, shake the coach's hand. The coaches are show their appreciation and... Uh, for the time that those, again, you know, wrestling cheerleaders are different. They're every Saturday, all day Saturday, they're usually cheering and away from home and, you know, evenings like this and wrestling for being a short season is a long season. Yeah. So. yeah I mean, 
whatever the wrestlers do, the cheerleaders got to do too as well. The only difference is the practices. and Otherwise, they're at the same competition, same tournaments, whatever it is. And this is always, you know, as a senior parent, it's tough, you know, to see your kid finally be done, or not done, but, you know, growing up and knowing that next year you won't be able to watch them participate. And it's something as a parent you enjoy, uh, you know, so much. You still enjoy the sports and the athletics portion of it, but it's not the same when you don't have your own kid participating. Yeah, and I know uh, it was the same way for my parents. I'm the only boy in the family, so as soon as high school wrestling and football was over for me, they're not go they're not seeing any kids in that. Uh, again, they moved on to volleyball, softball, and basketball, and went from there. But again, uh, great recognition for all these guys as well as Tate Jordan will come out now as our final senior. So does your dad pick favorite sports? Uh, would it have been your sister's sports or your sports? Um, I think he would pick my sister's sports uh, just because my youngest sister, she's definitely the mo most athletic uh, in the family. She's got the most recognition because she was on the state championship team for softball against North Lynn. Uh, if anyone's from Trainer, I apologize because that's who they beat uh, in the tournament for the chip. So she's got that whole big ring at home and stuff like that. But he's a diehard football guy at heart, so he loved watching high school football and college football for me. So that was a lot of fun for him as well. But... That'll be our seniors here tonight, Mary McCurdy, Tay Jordan, and Cohen Bruce getting to celebrate them. We'll take another quick break here on KS95.7 and WesternIowaToday.com. We'll be right back for our final duel of the night. That wrestler in the corner is dedicated and determined to work as hard as he can for his team. His drive and perseverance come from his core. Now, wouldn't it be nice to have an insurance agent do the same for you and be on your team? Here at Elvis Haas State Farm, we're in your corner to help you with your insurance on your auto, home, farm, business, life, and financial services. We help you understand your insurance and show you the benefits of bundling all of your coverages with just one company. Put us on your team here at Elvis Haas State Farm, one half block west of the courthouse, or call 712-243-4824. Here at Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, we're dedicated to agriculture. That's why we offer various services that fit your growing ag needs. All our decisions are made locally by experienced lenders that truly understand the unique challenges of your operation. We're large enough to handle all your lending needs, yet small enough not to lose that personal touch. Our dedicated loan officers want to work with you to help your operation grow and thrive. Feel free to stop in and talk about how we can help your business succeed. Rolling Hills Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Gas prices got you down? Need a ride to work or the grocery store? There's public transportation for everyone in Southwest Iowa. SWIDA offers taxi service in Atlantic, Glenwood, Harlan, Missouri Valley, Red Oak, and Shenandoah. $2.50 each way or $2 for seniors 60 years and older. Just call 1-800-842-8065 or visit SWIDA.com to schedule your ride. Get to the Super Bowl for Glow Bowling on Friday and Saturday nights. Perfect for birthdays, reunions, family and friend get-togethers, and date nights. They even have bumpers and ramps for the little ones. Glow Bowling, all the glow-in-the-dark fun you love. Plus, the friendly competition of bowling makes for a great night. Call Dan to schedule your next party at 243-4656. Glow Bowling on Friday and Saturday nights at the Super Bowl. Highway 71 in Atlantic to Atlantic Trojan Sports on KS 95.7 and live stream at westerniowatoday.com. Welcome back into Atlantic High School. I'm Austin West, joined alongside Cody Weaver as we get ready for our final duel of the night, Atlantic versus Harlan. Both teams picked up their dual wins over Denison here tonight. So this one really going to be the tiebreaker who comes out on top here in this duel. Yeah, and I don't, I'm trying to read coaches Duff, uh, Coach Duff there saying maybe they're going to try to wrestle two matches and get this over with. But, again, there's that 45-minute uh, break. So I don't know if we took enough time in that last duel. And with the senior recognition, if we're going to meet that 45 or if we're going to have to wait a little bit. Yeah, because, I mean, all the pins that Atlantic had, we jumped right through that, set, that first duel for them. And so... It'll be interesting to see if we're able to pull off two mats here tonight as we do have one JV match, it seems, but for the rest of it, it's going to be all varsity here tonight. 
Yeah, We're going both, both. Both mats. I'll see if I can widen the lens out a little bit so we can kind of catch both matches there. If you want, I can put this. I guess you're, you've got it hooked up a different way. That's right. That's our scoreboard cam, so it's a little different uh, than split screening it and making it that way. So we'll have the wide view for you on Western Iowa Today. Dot com if you're watching the live stream there. And then obviously you're listening right here on KS95.7 to this final duel of the night, Harlan versus Atlantic. As we're starting off at 106, we're going straight lightest to heaviest. And it's Colin Harris of Atlantic versus Nathan Sandquist of Harlan. And your wrestler introductions are brought to you by Elvis, ha Elvis Has State Farm, always in your corner. Yeah, outside single shot there by... Harris, Harris circles the opposite direction, gets his hips cast over for that two-point takedown. Right away drops to deep waist on the right side. Inside control on that left side, pushes him out of bounds. We're gonna go back to the center here at 106 pounds. So Colin Harris there with that takedown over Sandquist of Harland Community. Chop the left arm of Sandquist by Harris there. Peeling the left wrist out. Sandquist doing a good job trying to bring that back forward, but Harris doing a good job driving forward, keeping him broken down flat on his belly. Now he's working kind of both wrists here, peeling both sides out. Tries to get the left wrist out there. Sandquist comes up a little bit. Harris does a nice job covering that. Harris has a half in on that right side, releases that. Sandquist kind of broken down flat. Uh, got the left elbow post out. Uh, Harris has his hand in between there. Now he reaches up to a half on the left side, releases that, comes back across the hips. Chicken wing now left side, and he's right on the edge of the mat. Both wrestlers' hips are out of bounds. Harris with a half there on the right side, but they're going to go out of bounds. So. Over on this left mat, we've got 113, Tate Jordan of Atlantic and Jesse Jens of Harlan. And these two kids have wrestled a lot together in the past and both um, have been buddies for a long time, known each other for a long time. So that's uh, one of those that you want bragging rights over your buddy that you've oh, yeah. wrestled a long time. Oh, yeah. So. Colin Harris here with a chicken wing, able to roll Sandquist over and get that fall. Uh, just 21 seconds left here in that first period to start out Atlantic uh, with a pin at 106. As though, if you're following along on track wrestling, they'll have it a little messed up. They have it as Tate Jordan just getting that fall, but that's not the match that just got done. Uh, again, it just got a little mixed up on track. Tay Jordan still going over on our left mat. We're going to move on to 120 over on the right. Yeah, and it looks like uh, an escape by Jordan's down 3-2 right now. Pass with a shot attempt there. Uh, cradle a headlock attempt there, and Haas is able to roll through. Um, both wrestlers kind of scrambling here in this scramble position, but Braxton Haas is taking on Spencer Fink. Fink with a takedown here. Deep waist now, right side. Inside control on the wrist. Haas with a sit-out attempt here. T kind of a switch, but left that right arm back a little bit. On the right screen, they're going to go back out of bounds and come back to the center here. So it looks like we're going to have blood time uh, by both Atlantic wrestlers. They're going to go to the corner and get cleaned up a little bit and co get a little bit of discussion with the coaches here. And so it's Jens with a 3-2 lead over Tay Jordan here at 113 on the left mat. And your right mat is 2-0 right now. And that is Fink of Harlan over Haas uh, just early in this first period. So Haas is coming back to the center here, gets down and gets set in that referee's position. You see Fink gonna cover right side here, covers that right side, but he's gonna get a caution. Covers right side, right away Haas turns in, stands up to his feet. Fink tries to turn, pick him up and return him. 
We're gonna get call for stalling. Picks Haas up, releases Haas. Both wrestlers back on their feet right away, Fink in on another shot on Haas. Tay scrambling here, catches Jens on his back. Uh, can't quite maintain control. <laughs> He's used all the leverage he can there on the left-hand side of the mat there, and no control by either wrestler. So 2-1 uh, match right now. Haas uh, got taken down by Fink there, but got an escape here. 44 to go still here in the first period. Fink now going to try to throw again. Haas doing a good job counteracting that. Kind of got tossed a little bit early there, but um, was able to just get taken down. Second period here, it is Jordan down in that bottom position uh, to start here at 113, uh, trailing three to two to Jens. And on the right side, it's Haas and Fink. And it's a 2-1 match here with 17 to go here. Fink of Harlan Community with that advantage. Wrestlers separate. Jordan comes up here now. He's able to catch Jesse Jens. Uh, for a reversal here, the minute 23 to go here. Now no points awarded there. Uh, you're seeing a scramble there on the right side. It shows that they awarded two points and they're gonna take those points away. So it's gonna still be a 2-1 uh, match there. And it's bad enough for the scorekeepers to try to keep track of two mats on track. Jens now with a reversal and a chicken wing on the left side of Jordan. And Jordan's pretty comfortable in that position. Haas with a reverse attempt there. Jordan with an escape. Some ties it up, 5-5. Five, five. They're on your left-hand side. 35 to go in that second period. Haas with a switch attempt there, both wrestlers. Uh, go out of bounds and come back to the center. 2-1 right now, Fink with that advantage over Haas. And again, both these wrestlers for Atlantic are up a weight class from what they normally wrestle. Um, Jordan up at 113 and Haas up at 120. And both these Harlan wrestlers, uh, Haas with a real nice switch there. And Fink with a re-switch, puts a half in on Haas, tries to pick him up, elevate him, takes Haas to his back, but Haas is able to roll through and Fink trying to catch that arm of Haas and able to come around behind Haas. He's gonna lock the leg in now on Haas and a minute 18 to go here in the second period. 4-3 right now, Fink with that lead and Haas trying to do a reversal here, but he's got that arm kind of caught behind. So Fink should be able to hold on to that for a stalemate and Haas will go back down here. Minute seven to go in the second period and a little bit of blood time on the West mat. Still 5-5 match here to start the third period. So tight match. And on your right match, it's 4-3 right now. 4-4 tied match here with a minute to go in the second period. And you got to remember for Harlan, these are probably their two best wrestlers on the roster. Jesse Jens and Spencer Fink both returning state uh, qualifiers last season. And again, Atlantic bumping up both their guys to match up with them. Yeah. And Pass with a shot attempt, they're not able to finish that. Fink kind of in now on one leg, 39 to go there on the right mat you see on your screen. Your left mat, it's gonna be Jens starting in the bottom position there to start the third period, tied 5-5. Jens right away turns in, switches, gets on top for a two point reversal there over Jordan. Shot attempt there by Haas outside single, 25 to go here in the second period. 4-4 match here on your right-hand side. It's Fink of Harlan tied with Haas of Atlantic. And your left-hand side, it's 7-5 right now. Jens of Harlan with that lead over Jordan. Jordan is able to escape to make it a 7-6 match. Haas with a two-point takedown there. And a cradle locked up right as time expired there. Go to the third period. And Jens with a almost a two-point takedown, but Jordan trying to headlock here. Um, a minute five to go, gets himself in trouble, gets a little bit high and extended and gets taken down. So it'll be nine-six right now, 58 seconds to go on your left-hand screen. 
that's Jesse Jens of Harlan Community with the lead over Haas. Has Jordan on his back, and Jordan is able to roll through, but does get two more near fall, so it's 11-6 right now. And on your right side, it's 6-4, and it's Haas with control here on top in the third period over Fink of Harlan Community. Pass with a deep waist on that right, chops the left arm of Fink, keeps control of that, waits for Fink to come up, and Fink is very cautious and looks like he's kind of winded, and he's going to get his stall call against him. Pass now with a chicken wing on that right side, circles the left, puts Fink on his back, gets the pin. With about... 58 seconds gone in that third period. That was a 6-4 match, and it looks like Fink just ran out of gas. And also, Haas just kept working, working, working like he does on the offensive end there and won that match, stuck him. 10-7 right now, seven seconds to go, and it's gonna be Jesse Jens. Jesse Jens winning that at 113 pounds over Tay Jordan. So. We see both those guys are like, well, we're both glad this is over with and good match, so. And that's a big one uh, for Braxton Haas as well at 120 over Spencer Fink. Again, wrestling up a weight class, coming against the state qualifier, ended it with a pin as well in the last second. Man, you can't get better than that. You gotta just keep working and keep driving and that's what you, uh, Coach Duff, you know, preaches is it's all conditioning and mental mental portion is very t uh, very important, but also the conditioning. A lot of matches are won in the third period. And that's exactly what happened right there. We're up to 126 now here on your right hand side, and it's Aiden Smith taking on Aiden Ransom of Harlan Community. Smith with a real nice quick duck under there, catches the Turk. Drives forward here, gets Ransom's back exposed on the edge of the mat here. Still a minute 30 to go here. Got two near fall. Releases him back up to his feet. And this is gonna be Jaden Harder on the left-hand side. And he's gonna be taking on Adam Ellert. And Ellert we saw have a pretty good match uh, that first duel against Denison. Smith with a real nice quick takedown. Catches Ransom on his back here, is going to adjust. Three more near fall. Again, this is one where you're probably going to want to uh, get as many bonus points as possible. Jaden Harder on the left-hand side there with the takedown, stacks up Ellert uh, for two near fall, four nothing advantage for him. Minute 33 uh, in the first period still to go here. Harder with that half in. Catches Ellert on his back, settles in here. You see him doing a good job, and we saw that was a fast pound. <laughs> yeah, and you can see that Ellert even Ellert. thought that too. Yeah, he's like, "What? I was rolling through, and you called it on me." But you'll get, you know, matches that are to go like that. Yeah, and uh, Smith has uh, ransom on his back and wins by fall. So. And that one took a, a lot longer. It was a lot clearer than the one on the other match. Yeah, so that's, kind of a that's quick, your toss that you pound. get. But two big pins for Atlantic back to back. As it's kind of a pin show here it's tonight a, for the Trojans. It's gonna be a quick duel. It looks like at 100 and, let's see, we're at 138 on the left and 144. They're gonna, Harlan's gonna be open. So Draven Smith. Carter Hadley actually at 138 wins by forfeit. Draven Smith will be taking on Brody McKinley, and McKinley's a cradle kid. Likes to cradle. Smith stuffs that head, comes up the front headlock, reaches around the side here. Tries to shuck him by and releases that. McKinley now. A little bit of separation there. It's going to be Calvin Hayes here coming out at 150. It looks like for Atlantic on the left 
side of your screen. And he's gonna be taking on Brayton Cooper. That's one there on the right side. If you're Harlan, you want to get that one back because the referee just was not in position to call a pin for you. Uh, it helps out Atlantic, that's for sure. Again, that's Drevin Smith and Brody McKinley. It looked like it could have had a pin, but again, the referee just not in position in time, and, you know, Smith able to get out of it. See Hayes there with a kind of a duck under, keeps that arm. Going to try to work forward here for some near fall. Not able to get that done. Cooper there on the left-hand side of the screen, bellying out, but a two-point takedown there for Hayes. And McKinley with a cross-face cradle there on Draven Smith, back exposed, and gets the fall over Smith here. 33 to go here in that first period. And Hayes has Cooper on his back and is going to win that one by fall. Hey, I, like I said, it's a pin show here for the Trojans. You guys probably need to go over under like seven or eight. Yeah, that's what we were thinking. We thought we'd be like, man, there's going to be some touch, tough matches. We know both, all these teams are going to be really good and evenly matched. Then they have been, and we've gotten a lot of pins that have come the final 30 seconds of matches as well. A couple of real quick ones, but a couple of late ones too that you thought maybe would end in decisions. So it's been fantastic just to see the amount of pins that have come out after like tough battles as well just for the conditioning to show up late in those matches as well. So it's uh, it's still an open duel at this point. I mean, it's uh, there's five weight classes left. Um, uh, we've got, you know, some kids at 90, uh, 75, 90, uh, 215 if they bump some kids around in Sorrenton. So, but we're gonna give two forfeits here at uh, 157 and 165, it looks like for um, Harlan Community, both of those are one by four foot over Atlantic. We're going to come to 175. It'll be Donovan Hedrington. And at 190, coming up on your left hand, Matt will be Cohen Bruce. Yeah, because right now, 36-21, our dual score in favor of the Atlantic Trojans. And again, coming down to just four matches left to go. Yeah, and it's uh, Donovan Hedrington here on your right-hand side taking on uh, Tyrell Jacobson of Harlan Community. Cohen Bruce here at 190 ends up winning by four foot on the left-hand side of the screen. So we're going to go to 215, and it looks like it's going to be Zayden Parker Atlantic's quarterback here at 215 taking on a uh, kid that needs to get his straps up before he goes on the mat so he doesn't lose a point. Might be freshman coming in there at that rate. Not sure. Or maybe a sophomore. Uh, if you're not known and get straps up, you, you're probably a first timer. That's a goo uh, looks like Goobles, a sophomore of Harlan community. We're still kind of on our feet here in the on the right side of the screen. And again, it's Donovan Hedrington taking on Tyrell Jacobson. Both wrestlers have been neutral. We're halfway through this first period. Came out, both wrestlers came out. Kind of a slide by attempt there by Hedrington. Hedrington now maybe getting a little bit more aggressive. Some shot attempts, another slide by attempt. They're gonna go out of bounds and Hedrington hustles back to the center. So it's Zayden Parker here at 215, taking on Goobles. Parker. Actually, it'll be Keegan Madden, not Keegan. even listed on the roster. Okay. <laughs> it's Keegan Madden out there. Doesn't even have a profile to click on for Harlan Community on track wrestling. So it's going to be, you know, see on the right-hand side of the screen, Hedrington continues to move forward. I have not seen a stall call yet on Jacobson, but... Hedrickson's definitely been the aggressive one there on the right-hand side of the screen with 35 to go in the first period. Parker on the left-hand side with a, a takedown, kind of working cross-face side there. Now you see Jacobson with a uh, kind of a high crotch attempt here. They're going to go out of bounds and come back to the center. Parker rolls Madden over. And Parker wins that at 215 by fall over Madden. 
It would be uh, one match locked here at 285 pounds. And I think it'll probably be uh, for sure Evan Sorensen coming out. It looks like Harlan has a 285 pounder also. Hedrington really in good position there right on the edge of the mat as with one second left circles around behind there but both wrestlers they say were far enough out of bounds so be a one second and uh, go to the second period here on the right hand side of your screen. Yeah and we Zach and I have seen Jacobson a couple times at some tournaments and it may not seem like much has happened with him but he's got great conditioning so he'll let this go to the third period and then just try to outpace the guy. So you just got to kind of monitor him as he goes through his match. Uh, he's gotten to a couple of championship matches that way. Just kind of tire out, tire out, keep it close, and then pounce in the third period. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Sorensen here on your left-hand side taking on Spray right away with a quick takedown uh, to his back for near fall. Now he's working on the cradle. Comes back around behind. Again, works that cradle, cross-face cradle. Gets that cradle locked up. And it's going to be hard on that kid's leg. Rolls him through, gets it locked up, has spray on his back, and Sorensen there on your left-hand side wins by fall, 29 seconds into the match. So we're down to the last match here on the right-hand side. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. This is Hedrickton here at 175 pounds. With a cradle locked up, um, goes hip to hip, tries to go suicide cradle, but you see Jacobson trying to get his head out, gets his head out, puts Hedrington in his own cradle, and I don't know how he pinned him with his arm underneath him, but it must have been, the shoulder, shoulder blade must have been touching. So it's Tyrell Jacobson yes. winning that by fall here uh, in the, about halfway through the second period. It was a 2-0 match kind of to that point, so that'll be the duel. It was a quick one. It was, and again, that was kind of the thing I said. Jacobs, Jacobson will just, he'll just kind of stall you around, kind of lull you to sleep, and then when you're not expecting, he'll shoot something out, and we saw it there, got the pin there, but this one, it should be 54-27, it looks like, our final duel score. Our 106, I believe that was a forfeit for Atlantic, is, uh, again, it's not going to show up on track for people that are looking. Uh, 106 was uh, Colin Harris um, over, or excuse me, 106 was Dayton Van Horn is what they said over Jason Ludwig, but it, I believe it was, uh, oh, that was an extra That one. was JV, Sorry, yeah. yeah. So, again, if you're looking on track, it's not going to show up, but everything else, 113, Jesse Jens of Harlan over Tay Jordan, decision 10-7. to 7. At 120, Braxton Hass of Atlantic over Spencer Fink of Harlan Fall. 126, Aiden Smith of Atlantic over Aiden Ransom of Harlan Fall. 132, Jaden Harder of Atlantic over Adam Ellard of Harlan Fall. At 138, Carter Hadley of Atlantic forfeit. At 144, Brody McKinley of Harlan over Drevin Smith, Atlantic Fall. At 150, Calvin Hayes, Atlantic over Brayton Cooper, Harlan Fall. At 157, Brody Bendorf, Harlan forfeit. At 165, Jaden Stevens, Harlan forfeit. At 175, Tyrell Jacobson, Harlan over Donovan Hedrington, Atlantic fall. At 190, Cohen Bruce, forfeit for Atlantic. At 215, Zayden Parker of Atlantic over Keegan Madden, Harlan fall. At 285, Evan Sorison, Atlantic over Austin Spray, Harlan with a fall as well. And to wrap it up, Cody, we've got our match of the meet brought to you by Elvis Haas State Farm. I don't know, there were some close ones uh, here tonight, so I'll let you kind of Decide which one you want I'm to go with. I'm going to take the Braxton Haas and Spencer Fink match. Um, it was a pretty tight match. Um, in the end, it was Haas's aggressiveness that you know just kept go kept him going forward, and he ended up winning that by fall. Yeah, I I would agree with that one. That one was a great one as well. Another honorable mention, I think, uh, Jesse Jens and Tay Jordan. You know, the two that was a great uh, hometown one guys that have wrestled probably since yeah. they were super little kids. You know, and. Uh, battled it out and you know in the end they're still friends and they're still gonna talk to each other so and one of the best quotes i heard from football he was we had a guy that had o-line d-line they wrestled against each other they played football against each other all the way through high school said in a film study one time he's like he just knows me better than i know myself sometimes he knows what i'm gonna do because he's had to go against it for how many years now and so uh, that's kind of the thing that went with jens and jordan uh but again that'll kind of do it here for us from atlantic austin west 
Cody Weaver alongside you. Thank you for listening for we, this presentation. We will be back Saturday morning at 10 for the Roland yes. Dyer Tournament. We'll be doing updates every half hour, so probably 10 after, um, or probably 20 after, and then 10 till, and then we'll do the finals of that tournament live here on westerniowatoday.com, KS95.7. There we go. So you got plenty of wrestling all this weekend long. That'll do it for us here on westerniowatoday.com and KS95.7. For Cody Weaver, I'm Austin West. Thank you for listening to your home for Atlantic Trojan Sports.